flying bombers. I've never seen this before. The one and only. Mr. Rob Hart. You're on. And thank you very much, and welcome to the Whitney Forum, and welcome to game number one of the SJHL playoffs. All eight teams in action tonight. And that's right, the Big M is here, Austin Manis, pumped up and excited, as is the whole community, Austin. We got a lot of fun stuff planned here tonight. We're going to have a really cool video that I know you helped put together. We got the Jerry Hart uh, playoff towels. And we got a lot of people in here uh, ready to make a lot of noise. The Flint Flon Bombers, the Kindersley Clippers, it's... Uh, I guess the night we've been waiting for him, and it was uh, an SJHL regular season went by fairly quickly. Although for the Flint Flon Bombers, let's face it, a real tough way to end the season. But you know what? It's playoff time, and, and you can sit here all day and talk about this didn't happen, that didn't happen. The fact of the matter is, they still finished first overall. They still have home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. They won 44 games matching a franchise record. Coach of the year in Mike Reagan. Defenseman of the year, Noah Houle. Goalie of the year, Harmon Laser Hume. So maybe we should just be excited for the good things that happened and uh, forget about the last few weeks and get there ready to take care of some business. So saying that, no disrespect intended for the Kinsley Clippers because they come in here with really a team with no pressure on them. But uh, I think uh, got to let the Bombers do what they do and just see how the chips roll here. Oh, absolutely. You know what? I think if you look at it from both sides, you know what? You kind of almost got a little bit of polar opposites here. You know what? The Bombers, they start off really well beginning of the season. Obviously, later on, like you mentioned, the past month or so, kind of had a little decline. The fans, you know, maybe a bit uh, s skeptical. So coming into this game, they're hoping to see the Bombers play hard again. Then on the other on the Kindersley Clippers, not necessarily had struggles in the beginning of the season, but you know what? No one really wasn't too sure how they were going to do. They were kind of a middle-of-the-pack team, kind of down lower. And now here during the end of the season, really picked it up, beating some big teams, especially that weekend sweep in Humboldt with some huge games for them. So I know their fans are fired up. They've seen the progress they made. And now the Bomber fans, on the other hand, they're excited to see their team hopefully come out here and play like they have all season. And like you said, you can look at the last couple weeks there, the last month, and be like, oh, well, you did it this wrong, did it this wrong. But they had tons of accolades. They've been a good team for a majority of the season. And every good team even has their bad days. So I think we're going to be in for a great game. Like you said, the Whitney Forum is packed. SJHL hockey, playoff hockey is on right now. And everyone, if you're a Clippers fan, if you're a Bomber fan, is ready to watch this game because this is the game that everyone wants to see. A one versus an eight. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your rank is. This is going to be a good hockey game. Well, everybody starts off at zero, right? And I guess we, we look at the Bomber accomplishments. We talk about, you know, Mike Reagan, the SJHL Coach of the Year. Clayton Jardine, uh, he's been a Coach of the Year as well. He was a runner-up uh, this year. Uh, don't underestimate him. Uh, you're going to hear his interview coming up. Uh, very calm, uh, very uh, collected. He realizes the Bombers have, have struggled. And again, the task is simple for Kinnerson. So you try to come in here. You don't have to win both these games. I mean, if you win both games, that'd be great. The thing for them is to come in and, uh, awesome, thank you. The thing is for them is to come in and at least win one of the two, and then you kind of put the pressure on Flin Flon, and then obviously you, you take away home ice advantage. But uh, great opportunity for them. They're the huge underdog, and uh, again, all the pressure is on Flin Flon. They know that, but you play for home ice advantage all year long. Uh, it, it seems kind of weird to me to be actually starting at home. It's usually the Bombers are the, are the hunters. They're on the road someplace, but, you know, you take advantage of the great year you had, and uh, it should be a really interesting series. First ever. Playoff meeting between these two teams, so it should be a, a historic night here at the Whitney Forum. Exactly, Rob. You said it. We get to witness SJHL history, Bomber history in the flesh here between the Clippers and the Bombers, like you mentioned. First time ever playing. And I think you go, we got to give credit, obviously, to both coaches. Big congratulations to Mike Reagan and then Clayton Jardine of the Kindersley Clippers. And just how, that's kind of a very interesting thing is a lot of people don't often think how important coaching comes into these playoff games. Regular season, you can have a great team, and you know, but when you come into the playoffs, coaching is such a big part, and that's what I'm excited to see is how these both teams are going to adjust to each other depending on if they're winning or losing in the first period, the second period. What adjustments are they going to come out with? And I think that's what I'm excited about most is the different play styles and just the different te techniques the coaches are going to be using out here tonight. I want to see how both teams handle the crowd. I mean, we know it's going to be loud. We know it's going to be voiceless. The Bombers have played in front of it before. Again, it could be great if you're doing well. It could kind of go against you if you're not. Clippers have never played in this environment before, and it's interesting. Clayton Jardine said they tried some techniques back in Kindersley this week to get ready for the noise. You'll hear a little bit more about that. Crowd could be a factor, especially if the Bombers can get an early goal and get them behind them early. But then again, Kindersley can use that to their advantage, too, if they get a lead and take the crowd out of it. So that's going to be a factor as well. But... We're really looking forward to this one here tonight. We're going to take a quick break, come back with respective head coaches. But 
Do you see what I'm holding in my hand here right now? I see Montreal Canadiens, and I see sign. And who's used that sign? Cole right Caulfield. Wow. Wishing the Flin Flon Bombers the best of luck here. Big uh, SJHL fan. Sent me this autograph puck. It just, it just got delivered. There it is. You see it in the case. Cole Caulfield cheering for the Bombers tonight. So they got that. They got fans all over the place, including Cole, Cole Caulfield for the Montreal oh, Canadiens. How did you, you get a hold of that? That's unreal. Well, I'm just telling you the story. Wow, that's crazy, Rob. Big wow. fan, big SJHL fan. There it is, an autograph puck from Cole Caulfield directly, just to kind of a, a good luck momentum here for the playoffs. Wow. Well, you know what? Not like the Bombers need the good luck, but you know what? In the playoffs, any team will take anything. So what? A, that's amazing, Rob. Wow. It's going to be exciting. The Bombers and Clippers, it's the first ever playoff meeting, and it's coming up, of course, on Creighton Furniture, Flynn Flon Bomber Hockey. By the way, should welcome in some new sponsors for the playoffs as well. Great to have Dan and the crew from Chicken Chef. They're back. We want to welcome them to the broadcast. Uh, Frontline Sport and Leisure is back as well. Triad Realty welcoming back all these uh, great uh, sponsors from the past who jumped in and want to make sure that all these games, of course, get out to the fans, not just in northern Manitoba and Saskatchewan, but all over the Bomber Hemisphere. So big thanks again to them and, of course, all the great uh, sponsorship throughout the year, throughout the decades. You know, Flint Flon is a community that uh, it is getting smaller. But we still got some tremendous uh, businesses and a lot of tremendous people that love their hockey team. They love the SJHL, and let's face it, great to have them on board for these bomber broadcasts because, as well as you know, you know as well as I do, without them it doesn't happen. Absolutely, you need the sponsors, you need the community support, and you know what? That's one of the things that Flint Flint Flon thrives on. They've been thriving on the community support here, not only here in the Whitney Forum, around the community, all around the north, and like you said, all around North America, essentially. And hopefully we can see some of that community support tonight because the Bombers need it, the Clippers need it, and a huge thanks to our sponsors because, you know, we need it too because these broadcasts and these games, like you mentioned, don't happen without them. And speaking of great sponsors, Great North GM, they got your SJHL coaches show coming up. It's our first edition of the playoffs. Great to be back at the Whitney Forum here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlawnOnline.com. Truck month is Clear. back at Great hey, North GM in the park. Okay. And they have a huge selection of trucks and SUVs with deals so sweet, it'll make you say, Truck Yeah! Get 0% financing on select 2024 GMC and Chevy trucks, rates depending on terms OAC. Plus, get cash incentives on select 2024 GMC and Chevy trucks and low lease rates on 24-month leases on select 2024 trucks. So what are you waiting for? Take home a new truck or SUV for a trucking awesome deal. During Truck Month, the Great North GM in the paw. It's always a great day at Great North GM. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, to the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Family owned and operated with experiences in the north, visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. And you're on. Good evening. Welcome to our SJHL Coaches Show. We're joined here by uh, the SJHL Coach of the Year, Mike Reagan. Now, once again, Mike, uh, I know you're not big on personal accolades, but I just want to personally congratulate you again here for our first playoff broadcast. Uh, not, not just for the job you did this year, Mike, but uh, for the job you've done over the past several seasons. Uh, Well-deserved. You always got a good hockey club, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some more exciting playoff games. So, again, on behalf of the community and the organization, uh, and just Bomber fans everywhere, congratulations. Thanks very much, Hardy. appreciate it. And very well deserved, like we said, but now it's uh, taking care of business. The Kindersley Clippers are here, Mike, and they might be an eight-seated team, but you know as well as I do come playoff time, everybody starts at zeros, and let's face it, probably more the pressure on you than them. Oh, for sure. You know, we're supposed to win this series, and, um, you know, Kindersley's, uh, you know, been playing playoff hockey since January probably, um, you know, and, and we've got to fl flick that switch right now. Um, you know, it's no secret that, you know, the last month and a half you know we've been playing so so and uh you know we can't just talk about yeah once playoff time comes that we're we're going to get in playoff mode and, and that sort of thing um you know it's up to the guys right now but I, I i'm real confident in this group you know we've had a great week of practice uh the pace and the energy has been phenomenal um i think that the guys are chomping at the bit here and we have a lot of respect for what uh kindersley's done this year i think they're going to be a tough opponent but, um, you know, I, I believe in our guys, and I believe that we can uh, win this series. Well, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier today, too, and uh, you've preached this all year long. One of the reasons why you went out and made some extra deals, the deadline, depth. And, I mean, everybody's got a good first line in this league. We know that. Everybody's got a fairly decent second line. But, again, where you put the difference between the good teams, mediocre, whatever, third and fourth lines, is that going to be your strength in this series? 
Uh, we believe that. You know, we. I, I mean, there's no question that we think that we've got, uh, you know, the top uh, first and second line in the league or, or close to. And But we also believe that, uh, you know, we made those deals at the deadline, not for the regular season. That We knew we were going to be in a great position come playoff time. Those moves were made for playoffs. And to make sure that... Uh, you know, if there's any injuries, it doesn't matter who's stepping in. They're going to do a great job, and we're not going to, you know, lose any momentum. And uh, we've been here in this situation in the past, and we maybe ran into some injury trouble and, and just ran out of horses. And, uh, um, you know, that was one thing that we definitely talked about for a long time before the deadline was uh, making sure that uh, every guy that was inserted into the lineup could contribute. And had experience and and if you look at look at our roster here tonight uh you know we've got some good players that aren't aren't playing but we know that they're going to be uh in this series at some point and and uh in the playoffs and going to have to contribute i know the team struggled a little bit offensively down the stretch mike do you just kind of get the sense so guys like bockler silvestri lees anderson uh, noah hool you know sjhl defenseman of the year just a matter of time before you see them break out. Hey, I'd rather them have a little bit of a, a slow stretch or slump in, in the regular season than playoffs. So I think that, uh, you know, the juices are flowing right now. As I said, uh, practice has been great. The guys have been waiting for this for a long time. I think that the season feels like it's gone by real quick, but the last uh, month has felt like uh, two, three months for us. You know, we've just been kind of waiting and treading water and, and uh, we want this, you know. Um, we've wanted this situation. We've wanted this challenge. Um, I think the guys are going to rise to the, the occasion. You know, it's interesting, and maybe it's just a cliche, but they say, you know, offense wins a lot of games. Defense wins championships. I mean, you had the best goals against in the league. I know we talked a little bit. It's, it's When you have guys that can, can freewheel and score like you do, I guess it's a little bit tough when they're not scoring at the end of the year. And, you know, you got kind of got people uh, scratching their heads what's wrong with the Bombers. But the fact of the matter is you're still a pretty good defensive hockey team as well. Matter of fact, gave up 77 goals less than your opponent to start the playoffs here tonight. We know come playoff time, it's tight. I mean, you saw that the last little while with teams, like you mentioned, already in playoff mode. Are we look, maybe not looking at the defensive side of the game like we should be with your team heading in with how good defensive you've been? You know what, Hardy, it's funny because I think a lot of people, you know, fans, uh, broadcasters, you know, media, um, they always look at the offense. They're, they're never really focusing in on the defense. And, uh, I think it was about, you know, seven, eight years ago when we were struggling to get out of uh, the semifinals and get into the league finals. You know, I, I went back and looked at the history of, of uh, you know, the past champions, you know, the 20 previous years, and, and there was a common denominator. You had to be one of the top three defensive teams in the league. You know, so our focus really shifted. And, you know, we, we have the philosophy that if you're good defensively, the offense is going to be great because you're not going to be playing – you know, in your own end very long. And, uh, you know, we've had a great defensive team here over the last number of years. We've always been in that top three, uh, three or four in that category. And, and when you look at, uh, you know, one stat that I really look at is the difference between your, you know, goals for and goals against. You know, I, I forget what we're at, but we're at over plus 100 in, in those differential. And, you know, there's nobody that's even close to us. So, um, you know, those are all numbers that lean towards you should have a good shot at winning. But at the end of the day, you got to perform and you got to get the job done when it really matters. One last thing, Mike. You know the crowd's going to be crazy. I, the energy, is that just the one thing that uh, maybe that you're looking to really spark your club here tonight? I mean, nothing beats playoff time in the Whitney Forum. We've seen that the last number of years, and I know a lot of your players that have experienced it before looking forward to it, and some players that haven't are in for one heck of a great surprise. Is that the real, real ingredient? Uh, you usually start the playoffs on the road. It's been one of the few times you've been here at home to start. The, the playoff field, Mike, the hometown crowd, is that something you think is really going to be able to spark your club? Well, I think that's going to be important. You know, I think that throughout the last, I guess since January, you know, a lot of the new guys that haven't experienced the Whitney Forum in the playoffs, that's what they've been craving. They've been talking about it. Um, you know, even today, some guys are telling me, I can't wait to see tonight, you know, and, and that sort of thing. There's no question that, uh, um, you know, our fans are tremendous and, and there's no comparison and, and that. And they, they give us that extra juice when we really need it, you know. Um, you know, I think obviously like the first round uh, last year, we had home ice advantage and, and I think that was big for us. And, um, you know, it ends up paying off for us in game seven against Estevan, you know, and um, we're hoping that the Whitney form is good to us like it has been in the past. And the one thing about it is we lost two games here in regulation all year. 
you know, for us, uh, for someone to beat us, they've got to win in the Whitney form at some point. So uh, we like the fact that we've got our baby, you know, uh, Whitney form here on our side, and we're going to use it to our advantage. Sounds good, Mike. Uh, good luck tonight, and good luck here. Another playoff season is here in the SJHL. Thanks very much, Robert. Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Bombers here on 102.9 CFER and FlintFlontOnline.com. Take the wheel and declare your future towards success. University College okay. of the North is offering Class 5 adult driver training. You'll get a 16-hour course, four one-hour sure. in-car sessions, and testing support. Email class5driver at ucn.ca for more info. UCN, here you can. University College of North. All right, five seconds here. UCN.ca. UCN. You're on. SJHL Coaches Show continues. Clayton Jardine will join us, the head man of the Kenners Equippers. And I guess first and foremost, Clayton, congratulations on getting back to the playoffs uh, for tonight's uh, tournament game. Of course, you're back uh, on the bench. You must be excited about that. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, it was an up and down season and kind of all over the place. But um, you give credit to the guys, and I've, I've mentioned it to the group. And, you know, yeah, you got all of that. Uh, one versus eight, Clayton, but I think you showed the Bombers and showed a lot of people down the stretch that uh, you're not going to roll over for anybody. No, and I think, you know, there's there's a lot of examples where one beats eight and there's some examples where eight beats one, and I look at the Florida Panthers last year is that they just got in, right? And um, then we see what happens after that, and you, uh, you, you get timely goal scoring, you get a good power play, you get a good penalty kill, you get a good goalie, um, and it can go one way or the other. And um, we're very aware of, you know, Flynn Flon clinching, first place in the league in January and you know it's human nature to put it in cruise control so you know we we haven't seen the best Flint Fawn Bomber team since when we were here in October so um, that's kind of the message that we add to the guys is that you can't sit back and, and think of the Flint Fawn Bombers record the last couple of months they're a good hockey team and they're in first place for a reason. Saying that I mean you got in the postseason and, and obviously that was the first goal and let's face it too Clayton there's a lot more pressure on them than there is on you Getting back in the playoffs, is this a, kind of a nice scenario for you that all the pressure is on them? You just kind of come in here, take care of business, do the little things, and a lot of people kind of focusing more on them than maybe your team. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, that's, that is nice. And um, it is, you know, the playoffs is a mental warfare as well as a physical one. And um, I think, you know, that's a big part for our group is that, you know, there is no pressure. But in the, in the same breath, that's not a good thing. I think pressure is, is a good thing if it's used the right way. Um, so, yeah, obviously we know that the pressure is all on them and it's our job to win a game in the Whitney Forum and um, that's what our, our, our goal is. Well, and like I said, you never know, you win tonight. Boy, that really puts them back in a predicament because like you and I talked the last time I saw you, they're a pretty good home team too. I mean, it could come down to who can win in each other's building here to determine what happens in this series. Let's talk goaltending. I mean, you mentioned last year that the Florida Panthers beating Boston. You don't get there without good goaltending. I thought Javen was outstanding. You know, the two games against Flint Flon, he's got a safe percentage of over 900, which is pretty good. That's kind of the, uh, the key component for goalies to get to 900 and beyond. He's done that. Has he been a little bit underrated this year? I, I think he has, personally. And, 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 you know, in the same breath is that um, we've had a very good tandem, and John McPherson came in and won some big games for us as well when we needed him to. So I think, you know, the way that the season went, um, Cody had a good month, Falker had a good month, um, Johnny stepped up and had a really good month for us as well. Um, and then, and then Cody, Cody took the net back. So, in a in a perfect world, I think it all worked out well. Where Cody needed to be woken up in the sense of bringing John McPherson in and, and having Falker playing well at the same time. Um, and, and it really, it really just um, showed Cody and Logan that you know you're never guaranteed anything. Um, so you give a lot of credit to John McPherson coming in and uh, really kicking both those guys in the butt and waking them up and. Uh, helping them realize that they're really good goalies as well and just worry about stopping the puck. I think that was a big thing, too, is just get back to square one and remember why you play, play the position that you play. You know, it's a great opportunity for you, like we said, not only to knock off the number one team, but just playoff experience. I know 
one of the goals for you, you to be an elite program again in this league. They've had some great teams here throughout the years, which you're aware of. Pretty good team for you, of course, before you went to the Alberta League as well. So talk the playoffs as a whole, just experience-wise. How is important that your group embraces this? Yeah, and, and you're obviously building for for the years to come as well. And um, the Clippers organization as a whole, you you want to be building off of this experience. But there's there's eight 20 year olds that um, want to continue their playoff career as well. And you want you want to learn from the guys across from you because, like you said, they've been they've been playing a lot of hockey the last uh, two years up to this point. So they have that experience. Um, and, th and then for us, it's just excitement, right? And to, and to build off that excitement of the playoffs. But yeah, like you said, build on this and get the experience and um, be better for yourself down the road as well. It is Flynn Fawn. It's the Whitney Forum. It's always electric come playoff time. First 10 minutes tonight, critical for your group? Yeah, I felt like a football coach this week, just trying to uh, make the same atmosphere. And you're never going to make the same atmosphere. You can never really put a, um, a drill in practice that's the same as a game either. So. Um, that was a fun job this week, but yeah, there's nothing that emulates the Whitney Forum during the playoffs, and I think we're all very, very aware of you know what's coming here in the next couple of hours. But um, also, I think it just brings a little bit more juice to our, our club, their club. It's uh, yeah, the first 10 minutes is very important. The first period is very important to uh, to see where we're sitting with the uh, with with some momentum, or you know, we got to go in the room and regroup and, and uh, have a better second period. So hopefully, it's hopefully it's the first answer, but we'll see what happens. I agree. Yeah, it's going to motivate them, but I think it'll motivate you too. Quickly, Brock Miller, we talked about him, the former Bomber, looked good against his former team. He's been good for you down the stretch. Is he going to be a factor in this series? Yeah, I think he's got the most playoff experience uh, out of everyone on our group, so that's the exciting part for me and the reason, you know, I wanted to get him, I wanted to get Simon Diaz is you need a little bit of that experience. I think, you know, Logan and, and Tylan and Easto and uh, Gravy, like, you know, they've been here, they've been with the Clippers, but the playoffs is a completely different animal, as we all know. So um, having that experience with Brock Mueller and uh, dragging us all into the fight is something I'm excited to see. So am I. Clayton, great job. Congratulations on being a finalist for the Coach of the Year. I know you've won the, the award in the past, but great job getting this group back in the playoffs. Uh, anything can happen, and I think that uh, this series might be a little bit tighter than what people are thinking. So uh, good luck to you and your team. Thank you very much. There he is, a former SKHL Coach of the Year, a finalist this year, Clayton Jardine. We're underway. Rob Hart, the Big M, Austin Madness, the SKHL playoff night. The Flint Pond Bombers and the Kansas City Clippers for the first time ever in the postseason. The Bombers have the puck card around us, and boy, they're thrilled to get him back. He'll throw it to center. Diaz will get it. He'll rip it right back inside the Flint Pond zone. There's Bax. He'll pick it up. One of the key components brought in John of the 10th, and Bax has got it to center. Tried to fire that over the line. Got hit. Picked up by Silvestri. They're offside. And blown down 44 seconds in. Wow, what a great video tonight. Crowd pumped up, and uh, boy, nothing beats the playoffs. People have been waiting for this day for a long time, Austin. I know you have as well, and boy, should be a lot of fun. It'll be interesting to me see if the Bombers can get their uh, mojo back. And what type of uh, effort we get from Kittersley? Because like you heard uh, Clayton Jardine mention, Brock Mueller, most playoff experience of their team. There's a lot of guys in the playoffs for the first time ever here at the Whitney Forum tonight. Clippers got the puck inside the Flint Pond zone. They'll throw that out front. They were looking up for Linklater. Will be a huge factor for Kindersley here in this series. He can't pick it up. Leffer's got it. Quick pass to Silvestri. Down the wing across the line. Hey, Don shoots that one wide stick side. Picked up here by Sem. Knocked away here by the Clipper captain. Linklater to center. Here he comes. Linklater across the bomber line. Brings it in deep. Big hit there. Runs into Leffer. Bombers get it free. Silvestri. Nice pass, he finds Niven in full flight. Niven, for the net, Niven, can he finish up, salutes. Niven off the side of the net. And a good chance for the Bombers off the hop. Good job that time by Jamin to stay with him. and didn't give him anything to shoot at. Boy, it looked like he was going to get that one in, but uh, great job that time. It's not an official save here, but I'll tell you what, uh, Jamin played it very, very well. Great chance for Riley Niven off the hop. Boy, the place would have went nuts had he put that puck in. Here's Matt Egan to center. A back counter back across the line to Colin Olison. He knows what the playoffs are all about. Olison will get it in deep. Take it away from him. Puck hit a stick. Knocked down in front. Olison tried to chase it down. Picked up here by Devo. He'll rip that around the boards. Comes to the blue line. Knocked down by Tanchuk. Got, got blocked. He'll throw it back out front. Intercepted here by Schrader. He gets bumped by Joey Lees. Down the ice it goes with Aiden Chow. Back in his own zone. Flips it ahead to Tanchuk. Bounce it back to Egan. He'll chip it back across the triple clipper line. Picked up by Smith, who then gets it to Taylor, and he'll chip it back in the Flint Pond zone. Tanchuk is there. Plays it ahead. Puck comes back. No big knock it down at center. He'll rip it back inside the Flint Pond zone where Chow waits for it. Aiden Chow. 
off the glass, gets it out, Smith grabs it, the clipper side of center, feeds it back to Hilbig. Here's Hilbig up the middle, good pass, picked up by Taylor. He'll flip it towards the front of that, grabbed and covered here by Harmon Laser Hume. 2.47 to go, good pacer early on. Yeah, crazy energy, and you saw it right off the face off there. Carter Anderson and Brock Mueller lined up with each other and just already leaning on each other's shoulders, giving each other a hard time, and then almost a huge play there by Riley Niven, receives a nice stretch pass in the neutral zone, crosses over, beats the defenseman, comes around, almost able to duck it in, but just goes a little too much past the post, but great energy from both sides right now. English to take the face off against Silvestri in the flint zone to the left of Hartman Laser Hume. Silvestri, Bockler, the forward group, they're joined here by Cohen Sem. It's Silvestri that's got the puck. One of the hottest bombers down the stretch. Had a 10-point scoring streak going until the uh, humble third. And again, they score! Jacob Bockler off the post and in! Wow! Routine shot and listen to the crowd! You heard me mention at the pregame show, guys like Bockler, guys like Anderson, guys like Lees. It's a pretty impressive offensive list. Waiting for him to break out. That is a huge goal here by Jacob Bockler, who's got a, a good stretcher without scoring. Beautiful goal off the post. He gets in, and it just goes to show you again the simple things that you and I talked about. You shoot the puck, you never go wrong. Exactly. He grips it. He rips it just past the blue line. And what a great shot. And like you mentioned, those are the types of guys the Bombers need to step up if they want to be playing how they played in the first half of the year. Like you said, Bockler and some other guys haven't been scoring as much as they used to. But right there, Jacob Bockler. Well, a pretty unpredicting shot, beautiful goal. Well, and a lot of playoff experience, right? He was on the Satanko Cup team a couple years back. So Bucker had 22 in the regular season. He's got the first playoff goal here tonight. Here's Lake Litter back to the way a shot. Laser Hume stops that. He'll grab the rebound as they get the announcement here on the goal. Alexi Silvestri, of course. They've been working magic together. So 22 for Bockler again in the regular season. He gets the first goal, 2.59 in. And I don't think Jamin was set for that shot. Absolutely. I think that was a very unpredicting shot. Kind of from a weird angle, too. It looked like it was really tight. I don't think Jamin was predicting that at all. Lake later against Silvestri. Great start for the Bombers. The Clippers with a chance to keep the puck inside the flint flan zone. Townshuk in the corner. Grabbed here by the big hill big. Big body. This will be the line that flint will have to really try to shut down here in this series. Silvestri gets it back, feeds it to Semp, Semp to center. To Bockler. Bockler had Silvestri open, but knocked away at the last second. Bouncing puck back to the Clipper line, or back to the Clipper net, rather. That's picked up here by Ethan Hilbig. His shot deflects off his uh, brother, Tylen, and then a roll back in the football zone. Leper back to the net, slings the pass to Hool. Here's Silvestri at his own blue line. Alexi Silvestri tries to fight off the check, gets slapped in here by Anderson. Justin Lees will get to it, he'll pick it up. Bombers dump it in. A one nothing lead for Flint Flan. An early goal here by Jacob Blocker. Here's English to center. Back at Flint Flan territory. Laser Hume out. He'll flip it around the boards. Piccinino up the boards to Justin Lees, who gives way here to Noah Hull. He'll tap that one in. Lees racing in, trying to take it away here from DeGraves. Puck squirts free in the corner. There's Piccinino, the little spark plug. Lost the puck back in the net. Clippers get it back. Brock Mueller, the former bomber, has it. He'll send that back to center. Poked in that time by DeGraves. And picked up by Noah Hull back of his own net. Bumps it back to McNutt. McNutt's first chance of SJHL playoff action in the Western Hockey League. The early part of his career. Here's Colin Olsen. Dropped it back to Pichonito. Out front! There's an opportunity for Anderson. It turned away by Cody Jamin. Anderson, the guy you like to have going to the front of the net. And the Bombers, one thing we're seeing a lot that we didn't see down the stretch, their way that they're getting to the net like they did early in the year, that hunger to get to the net, dump the puck off and attack, attack, attack. Absolutely. You know what? They're not playing around in their own zone. The second they get the puck, they're making the passes, they're doing the movement, they're doing everything right to try and find those openings. And like you said, something we didn't see a lot of here in this past past month, finally coming back for this Bombers team. All of a sudden, Niven had a great chance off the hot Matt Egan, the forward group for Flint Flon. It's McNutt. And Aiden Chow on the back end. The Clippers win another faceoff here. They've been good at the faceoff so far tonight. And they win an important one there. They'll flip it up the left side. Picked up here by Perlinger. He'll flip it in. Bombers try to jump on it. The Perlinger twins are out there. They work very hard against the Bombers. Actually, the last year and this year, I've been impressed with their play against Flint Flon uh, head-to-head. Puck takes a weird bounce. Goes to center. Grabbed by Olofsson. Tried to feed that one back to Niven. Broke it up. Matt Egan hits out of center. Plays it back to McNutt. He'll drop it in the zone here for Chow. Chow up the boards. 
Egan did not get a piece of it. It'll be an icing call. And we'll get a face off back at the Flin Flon zone. 14.47 to go here. And I just want to throw a uh, big shout out to uh, Lizanne and Rod Friesen from Lanigan. Big Bomber fans. And it's uh, Kyle Olison's uh, aunt and Uncle Shannon Bob. So uh, relatives of uh, Ky- Kyle Olison. His aunt and Uncle Shannon Bob Wagger also listening in Calgary. So always listen to all the games. Always watch the games on Flow TV. So uh, I want to make special note of those uh, fantastic people that uh, are in the audience every game. Face off once again in the Flint Flon zone. The puck will roll to the front of the bomber net. Grabbed here by Laser Hume. The shots are 2-1 Flint Flon. And a big goal here by Jacob Bockler early. And uh, the Bombers want to get off to a good start to get the first goal. And a guy that they need to get scoring. So a really good start here tonight. Oh, absolutely. Not even just the, the goal. It's the ener- overall energy from the Bombers right now. And just great. Something we haven't seen for in a few weeks from this Bombers team, it feels like. Blake Lander to take the face off here against Gruner. Gruner, a big face off man for Flynn Flon. And they're going to rule. They're going to uh, throw Linklater out, so he'll be going, we're going to take the draw. Bombers win the face off. They rip that around the boards. Jill Barrett knocks to the ice. Puck comes back to Tancha. Back of the goal it goes. With Flynn played ahead. It's turned over. He'll make a chance and a shot on target. And it's the first defensive breakdown in the game for the Bombers. you got to be sure, Ross, you can't dump the puck up the middle of the ice. No, that's hockey 101. Don't throw the puck up the middle of the ice, especially when no one's there. They do that. Give them a nice high slot shot to the Clippers. But, you know what, thankfully, Harmon Laser Hume's ready, steps out, gloves it, no problem. And you know what I think this is? And I'm not going to take anything away. There's a chance the Clippers went off the face off again. And we saw this. You were in the studio during the Humboldt game. These linesmen are throwing everybody off by not dropping the puck. And throwing guys in and out, you can't get in sync. Absolutely. You know what? I've noticed that in a few games this year. It's taken like 30 seconds to a minute some days to get these pucks going, and it throws everyone off. And I honestly think that that's what's, I mean, not to take it anyway, it's a great play the Clippers made to keep the puck in. But I'm telling you, this throws everybody out of whack when you're doing this. 100% Rob. Off the face, off, there's a chance for the Clippers again. He'll be just, or Linklater just missed. They come back again. That went far to the top of that. The Bombers did quick stand in their own zone here. And they weathered the storm. A couple great chances for Kinnersley to tie the game with their number one line out there. Here's Linklater. In the corner of the blue line it goes. This is Hillbig. Through traffic. Goes wide. Puck at the side of the bomber net. Lee's after it. Up the board here to Pichonito. They get the puck to center. Boy, Kinnersley comes close here. As a puck redirects inside football territory. Hillbig. Throws into the corner. That's uh, Tylen taking the pass from Ethan. Buck comes back to the Bomber blue line. That's grabbed here by Leper. He's got it. Feeds it back to Hool. Back to Leper. Leper off the boards. Buck will roll back at the Clippers zone. Jamin going to come out and get it. He'll stop it back to the net. Gruner was on top of him. Clippers lift it out. It gets past Leper. Down the ice it goes. Hool will race after it. 13 and a half to go. Opening period of one nothing. Flin Flon lead. But the Clippers have come close with a couple of defensive breakdowns by Flin Flon. Demo at center. Tapped it ahead. Picked up here. By Van and Elson, he'll dump it in. Laser Hume out of his net. Picked up along the boards. Here's Joey Lees' pass to Gruner. Over top of his stick, Demo will deflect that to center. Puck goes back in the flip flon zone. Gilbert there it again. Had a couple guys on top of him. Gilbert, nice move in his own blue line. Gives it ahead to Cohen. Seth, he's across the line. Trying to come back to Gruner. Broke it up the blue line. Patrick's long shot. Wide of the mark. Picked up by Schrader in the corner. Can't clear it out. Bocker, the goal scorer, holds it in. Jacob Bockler in the corner. Down on one knee, loses the handle. Intercepted here by Perlinger. Perlinger in the center, wait for some mates to get on side. He'll send it in. Backs there to get it. Look out, he throws it up the wall, hit a skate. And here comes Bockler down the way. Jacob Bockler, a great move, kind of flip it back to Sylvester, broke it up in the last second. Clippers jump it ahead. Perlinger to the other Perlinger. This is the only team in the league that has two sets of brothers on it. And actually had three sets of brothers at one time when the, before the Coxes went to Belfort. Wow. Never heard of that before. Here's a chance for Sylvester inside the Clippers zone. He fanned on that. Picked up this time by DeGraves. He had some trouble handling it. Took a body check here by Sylvester. He puck bounced along the boards. Olison after it. Knocked away from him. Puck stays in. Niven after it. Poked away. The Perlinger has it with Matt. Perlinger sends it towards the front end. It's wide. McNutt will chip it along the board. After a bit of a Tough start for the Clippers. They picked up their edge of play here and have had some uh, good opportunities in Flint Flon territory. They'll keep the puck in deep. Egan will get a hold of it for the Bombers. And he does get it out. 
Off the boards, back down the ice, and hit somebody, so icing waved on. Hillbig is there. Hillbig back of the goal. Throws that back over to the uh, defenseman, Smith. Here's Smith. Carries it to center. Inside Flint Flon territory. Knocked down back of the goal here by Harmon Laser Hume. Up the boards to Joey Lees. He lost the handle. Chow will flip it back to McNutt. McNutt back to Egan. Egan dishes it off the boards down the ice. Gets away from Nemo. And an icing call against Flint Flon Bomber uh, Bench. Protesting. But it is an icing call with 11 11 to go. Shots favoring Kindersley, uh, 6 to 2 here on our triad shot clock. The triad shot clock. Don't forget indeed. about that. No, I, I won't. You, you got to you wake up here a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm wide awake, Rob. Don't worry. But Kindersley gets some great shots there right at the doorstep, about 4 or 5. The game but, should be 1 1. Absolutely. But Armin Laser Hume feeling hot right now. Clippers with another face off. Diaz is locked shot. That's turned away. Big rebound from the bomber net. They jump on it again. Boy, the Clippers, a nice start here tonight. They might be down a goal, but uh, for the Bombers to ice it once again. Diaz will touch up inside the Clippers zone and a face up. Holy cow, look at that 50 50, Austin. We're already over $10,000. Oh We've been playing half a period yet. I, I should have got one. I didn't get one. Maybe I'll have to go down to intermission. I would. Uh, you only got to win once. Don't worry, Rob. Lunch on me for the rest of the year if we, if we win. You heard it here first, folks. Gruder to take the face off here against uh, the Clipper captain, uh, Linklater. Bombers win the draw. The puck will go deep in their own zone. McNutt is there. Nice pass to Egan. Egan the center. Got to come back to Gruner. Hit a partition. Gruner got it back. He'll flip it back in deep. There's Diaz. Got hit hard. And throws it back to the net. Hillbig. Hits it away. Picked up at center ice here by Evans. Evans across the bomber line. Made a good move. Got it in deep. Back along the boards. Picked up that time by Hillbig. Back of the goal it goes. There's Linklater. Linklater had a good chance here earlier in the period. Linklater, the captain, swatted away from him at the last second. Here's Gilbert for Flint Block. He'll get it back up the ice to center. Here's Gilbert. Little shake and bake. This is off to Piccinino. Piccinino tried to get position to take a shot, and it rolled away from him. Here's Anderson for the Clippers off his foot goal. So from the bomber net, grabbed and smothered here by Harmon Laser Hume, the busier of the goalies tonight. 8 2 the shots, the triad shot clock in favor of Kindersley. But interesting, I don't know if this was on the air or not, I don't think it was. Coach, um, the head coach, Clayton Jardine, said it's important for Jamin to get a lot of shots. The fact that he's sitting down there cold right now could be a factor here as this period goes ahead. Oh, absolutely. And we've seen it many times here in the SJHL. Goalies get cold and then they face one about in the, fi in the five minute period, they see nothing, then one good shot and it's over, right? So. Well, the Bombers, one goal and two shots. There's a chance to get right off the face off. Knocked away by Harmon Laser Hume. Anderson tried to get going. He knocked away from him by the four check by the Clippers, but fantastic here early. Noah Hull to center. Banks it ahead. Picked up by Justin Lees. He's got Anderson. Lees, a shot! There's a save by Jamin and He's shooting all the way. He had Anderson out front. A good hard low shot and a great, great stop that time by the Clipper netminder. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Bombers get a good rush there. First shot in a while. He had Anderson on the other side, but would have been a tight pass. And, you know, Justin Lees, he loves taking that shot there at the bottom of the left circle there, kind of close to the goal line. He's made it many times before. It doesn't go that time, but some great shots there from the Bombers. We'll take a break. Media timeout. Put the in front. one nothing. Bockler's got the first of the postseason here. On 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlotOnline.com. Ud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this bomber broadcast. Clear through bursaries, donations for hockey schools and clubs, community events. Uh, I got 23 seconds now. Ud Bay has supported the Flintfont community with their 34 generosity for decades and continues okay. to be a major donator to charities, events, and organizations. 10 seconds. Ud Bay thanks the people of Flintfont and the surrounding communities for their continued support. And you're on. Media timeout, uh, midway point of the opening period. The Bombers a one nothing lead. There's three shots, though, on the triad shot clock so far here tonight. A great fork check here by Kindersley, and it's obvious to me they watched a little bit of game film before they came out here for this game tonight. Well, as you heard in the interview, also did some atmospheric tests as well, getting the crowd going, get the speakers out. Said felt like a football coach, as a lot of football coaches do. They crank the music, make it nice and loud, and kind of emulate what it was like here in the Whitney Forum. But like you said, you can't replace the Whitney Forum. I know, atmosphere. but it's a simple fix. Get a couple of goals, get the Bombers down, the crowd goes away. Well, then you don't need to worry about it anymore. That's right. I wouldn't say simple, though. A little harder than people think. Anderson set for the face-off here against Linklater inside the Clippers zone. The right of the goaltender, Jamie. Not a lot of face-offs. Clippers looking for a penalty here. One of the sticks was uh, fired on the hand of Hillbig, and I think they're going to get a penalty. 
It's going to be a slashing call against Piccinino, and Kindersley will get a power play with a chance to tie up this game here at the midway point of the opening period there, uh, Austin Mattis. The first test here of the night, Bombers penalty kill and power play, number one all year in the SJHL, but like you said many times, playoffs is a different game, and in game one here of a seven-game series, this could make or break the game here, especially being the first one to get tested here on the penalty kill. Well, the Bomber penalty kill, like the Big Ed mentioned, number one during the regular season, 87.7% the Clipper power play, ranked eighth, and they've looked good five on five tonight, so we'll see what Kinderson can do on the power play, a slashing call to Piccinino. And, you know, we talk a little bit about the Bombers' woes down the stretch and the offensive struggles. I know they took a lot more penalties down the stretch as well. Oh, absolutely. A lot of stick penalties. I think for the first 80% of the season, they were bottom two in penalty. Yes. Yesterday. They were very, very disciplined. They kind of gave up a little bit as the season went on. He'll make the faceoff against Silvestri inside the flip flon zone. Big clipper power play here. They win the faceoff. They've been just fantastic at faceoffs tonight. Bockler can't get the puck out, but it rolls back over to McNutt. He'll play it ahead. Here's Silvestri. Short-handed across the clipper line. Hangs onto it. Had Walker break it in the front of that, but he'll hang onto it. Beats it back to center. There's Justin Lees, a drive on target. Of course, his six short-handed goals led the league this year. Clippers pick it up. They'll motor up the ice. Here comes Diaz, the good-looking young D-man. Diaz came from the Alberta League January the 10th. He and Brock Wheeler, two excellent additions by uh, Clayton Jardine. Diaz was great in those two games against Flin Flon uh, back down the stretch, including that beautiful wraparound goal that he scored. Picture of beauty. He's been fantastic for them. He gives them that quarterback they need for the power play. And Brock Wheeler out there right now. Watch him. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't think we haven't heard him too much so far, but like we said, at the very beginning, him and Anderson already kind of going at it off the faceoff. I know he's looking to make a splash tonight. Faceoff in the flip flop zone. A minute 24 to go in the Clipper power play. Nine minutes to go in the opening period. Flintbond does have an opening goal here by Jacob Bacher. There's Leopard. Shot will hit a stick. He'll get it out. This will chase Taylor back inside the Clippers zone with Gruner barreling in on him. He'll play that one back of the goal to DeGraves. This is DeGraves to center. Carries the puck in across the bomber line. Poked away, goes to the corner. Gruner after tech get a stick on it. Grabbed here by Justin Lees, and he'll get it back down the ice. Jamin comes out. He'll stop it. And Inglis will pick it up, and he'll take over there. 51 seconds to go in the power play. Eight and a half in the period. one nothing Bombers. Here's the drop pass. Picked up by DeGraves again at center. DeGraves gets that one over to uh, Anderson. He gets taken down hard. And again, the puck's stripped away, set back down the ice. DeGraves there to get it. Niven watches him. 30 seconds to go in the Clipper power play. DeGraves one more time will carry it up the ice. Center. Stott, Niven took it from him. Good penalty killing here by Flint Flon. Anderson gets it back, though. Across the line. Broken up this time by Noah Hull. Back down the ice and racing in shorthanded is Niven, who's had a couple nice shifts to start the game here tonight. Brock Mueller will pick it up. Here he comes. Mueller to center. Brock Mueller across the bottom of the line. Going wide. Hangs on. Goes down hard back of the net. Good effort by Mueller, though. Smith races to keep it in. Back to five aside. There's a shot. Into the glove and the save made by Lazer Hume. And a good penalty kill there by Flint Clark. Absolutely great job there. Not really any pressure at all there from the Clippers. Bombers played tight neutral zone defense, got the puck, dumped it down, killed it off perfectly. But almost a nice little rush there from Brock Mueller. He kicks it up to the blue line. Wide open lane, but yet again, Harmon Laser Hume not afraid to come out and really make that, that angle hard to hit. 10 for the Tri Realty shot clock in favor of the road team tonight. A good road period for Kindersley despite being down a goal. Jacob Bockler, early 259 in, the only goal tonight off the post. I really think he caught Jamin napping on that. Off the face off, another quick shot that time by Perlinger. Clippers grab their own rebound. They'll get it back in deep. Bockler, the goal scorer, got a hold of it. Rims it around the boards. Here comes Hillbig. He'll knock it down for the time being. Perlinger got it. Got it back in, and now Silvestri has it. He'll take off. Silvestri to center. Up the middle. Silvestri drops it back, and Sepp can't get a stick on it. Boy, Silvestri's been dynamite again. And he just, he's just been so close to breaking away here. A very good opportunity again. Hillbig. Chad's blocked here by Sepp. Can't hold it in. Mack gets it back to center. He'll take off across the bomber line. Mack hangs on. A shot kicked out that time by Laser Hume. Here's Sepp. Back for Flint Flon, down to one knee, tried to play it back across the line, broke it up, hit somebody on the clipper bench, and blown down with 6.50 to go in the opening period. 10 for the Triad Realty shot clock in favor of the Clippers here tonight, and they've done a really good job. Their forecheck has been strong, and 
if they continue to do that, if you're just hoping the Bombers defense continues to turn over the puck, and they've done it a couple of occasions. Absolutely. If you're the Clippers, if you told someone, you know, hey, we're going to be leading the shots 12-4 with 6.50 left in the first period, I think you'd be pretty satisfied with that. But right now, Bombers just getting a bit better look to that one goal that kind of threw them off. Off the face off, Clippers to center. That's uh, Demo. He overskated it. Puck comes back inside the Flin Flon zone. There's McNutt. Back of the goal. Feeds it to Chow. Pass gets outside the zone. Demo cut it off again and right off the glass back in Flint Flon territory. Chow will knock it down. He'll play it quickly. Look out. It leaves popped it up. The puck will come outside the line. Demo couldn't knock it down. Grabbed instead here by Schrader. And blown down just below us. And we got a little pushing and shoving. Uh -oh. Holy cow. We've got uh, Taylor and It looks like... Uh, Gilbert mixing it up. There might be a couple of quick I think there is going to be quick little minor penalties being handed out here. They're roughing each other up just below our broadcast location. So Gilbert will go and so will uh, the Clippers Taylor, I believe. Maybe not. I mean, he looked like he was signaling. Yeah, he is signaling penalties. They both tried to skate to the bench here, but the referee says no way. They tried to pull a fast one on him. Gilbert not happy. He better keep quiet here. That's one thing. In the, the message has got to be clear in the playoffs if we've learned anything. Do not say anything to the officials. No, absolutely. The precedent's been set here this year. Yeah, we don't need any of that. And usually Joe Bears, he's very good with, you know, not getting too many penalties. But, you know, I saw them kind of going back and forth since kind of the beginning of the game here. And I think uh, not the kindest words said between each other. So we're going to be four on four for the first time here tonight. 12-4, the tri guilty shot clock for the Clippers. Here comes Anderson for flip block. Anderson down the wing, goes wide, hangs on to it. Back to the blue line to Lepper. Gets away from him over the glass and out of play. And hope everybody okay down there, Austin? Yeah, everyone looks okay. I think it looks okay. Didn't hit anyone. No babies crying, so we're good. Another big hello going out to uh, my good buddy Mike Alexander. Listing in Palm Springs tonight. Wow. Never been there. Definitely nicer weather than we have here. I can guarantee you that. Anyway, hopefully enjoying the game. I'm no doubt cheering for a big bomber victory. And great to have him reach out to us here tonight. Here's Linklater, the quick pass for the Clippers. He's away with Diaz coming into the play. Linklater brings it in. Anderson chopped it away from him. Look out, Anderson. Almost got it. Knocked away in the last second. Picked up here by Hillbig. Loses the handle again. Carter Anderson back in his own zone. Dropped it back that time for Lees. He got crossed up. He'll dump it back to center. Smith waited for it. Lost the handle. Intercepted by Lees. Lees to Bomber captain. Back across the line. Justin Lees has it. Good work along the boards, but turned over and grabbed here by Smith. Five and a half to go opening period. Here's the pass to Evans. He gets it, throws it towards the front of the net. Picked up back of the goal this time by Inglis. Chopped away from him. Clippers hold it in. They'll rim it around the boards. Back of the goal. Silvestri waited for it. Here's Alexi Silvestri to center. Beats his guy. Silvestri across the line. Hey, good. Shoots it. Rips that one wide. Glove side back to back. a hard drive. Stick save made here by Jamin. Good shot there by Bax. Here's Evans. The other direction for Kindersley going end to end, which you would think would favor this high flying flip flon team. Maybe the style they want to get into. Puck poked back of the bomber net. Grabbed here by Tanchuk. Feeds it back to Bax. Tanchuk with some room at center. A lot of playoff experience for him. He was there for the Centennial Cup run a couple years back as well. Just a rookie that year. And a 19 year vet on the team, of course, this time around. Clippers running around their own zone a little bit. They caught the puck up. So Vestry back back of the net. Trying to make something happen here to the blue line. Mueller got a piece that couldn't knock it down cleanly. Here's Bax. Bax, side of the net. Chance in front. Good save, Jamin. Oh, what a chance for Alexi Silvestri, Anthony Bax. That's why they brought him in, Austin. Absolutely. Two great back-to-back -back plays from him. Has that nice clap bomb from the blue line. And then right there, not afraid, to set up. not afraid to dive down with the puck and go right and attack the middle. Finds Alexi Silvestri. Alexi Silvestri, talk about him for a second. He's been having some great opportunities so far, too. Looks like he's about a millimeter away from finding one. Great to see him play so well. 4.20 to go in the opening period. 12-6 to shots in favor of the Clippers. The Try out the shot clock here tonight, but a one nothing flip one lead. A great chance moments ago by the amazing Alexi Silvestri. Olafson to take the face off against Linklater. Buckle roll back of the Clippers zone. There's Hillbig. Back of the net. Picked up by Hillbig. He'll get it out. Chases Nick Dutt back inside the flip one zone with Linklater coming down. Linklater chase right back of the net. That's what you got to do. Great fork check again by Kidders. A great game plan for them coming in here tonight. They'll keep the puck in deep. That's Hillbig, throws it out front. Knocked down by Linklater. 
Can't get a shot away. Puck stays in. No, Smith will swat it to the corner. Here's Olison for Flynn Flunt. Dropped it back to Chow. Ahead for Niven. Up the boards. Olison tries to catch Smith. He will. Olison goes down hard in the corner. Trying to throw it back out front. Hillbig has got it. Off the glass. Knocked down by Joey. Leaves can't hold it in. Here comes Anderson for the Clippers. Back the other way. Middle of the ice. A shot off a skate and went to the corner. Terenchuk. Back up the ice, down the ice. Diaz couldn't knock it down. Icing waved off. Here comes uh, Gruner after it. He can't pick it up. Puck a roll to the blue line. Picked up by Inglis. Knocked away here by Joey Lees. Off the boards. Back inside Clipper territory. Diaz played that one over to DeGraves. Center ice for Mueller. Here's Brock Mueller. Back inside Flint Fawn territory. Back inside the Whitney Forum. Puck knocked away from him. Flint Fawn will clear it out. DeGraves back to grab it at his own blue line. Being watched here, he'll slide the pass back to Diaz. Diaz, back to Mueller, can't get a stick on it. Here's Gruner. By himself, the left of the line was changing. Tried to knock it down, tries to pin it up. Grabbed here instead by Carter Anderson. Anderson tried to flip that to the blue line. Hit a leg. Anderson back on top of it. And Diaz will bring it out. Diaz. Throws it back inside the Flint Flon zone. Hool there to collect that. Noah Hool up the boards to Justin Lees. Lee's tripped up here at center ice, and the Clippers will fire it back in. 2.25 to go opening period. Still one nothing. Flynn Flon, Luke Lepper back of the bomber net. 12-6 the shots. Clippers favor on the track shot clock. There's a turnover again. Link later knocked it down in the Flynn Flon zone. Throws it back up front. There's a chance by Hillbig. Fired on target. And a glove save made. And how many turnovers is that in the flip one zone? Five? I was going to say, Bombers turn it over a little too much in their own zone. They're having a hard time. Give Kinnersley them. credit, though. They've got a pretty oh, good system going I, here. Absolutely, they are. You know what? They're doing a great job getting in those lanes, and they're very much anticipating every single Bombers pass. First five minutes, they kind of weren't ready for it. Now they kind of see where the Bombers are trying to pass it. They're anticipating very, very well right now, especially in the Bomber zone. But other face off back in the flip flon zone is uh, Bacher lines up here against. Lick. You're going to see a lot of Lick later here in this series, especially with these big face offs uh, in the offensive zone. He and Bacher tie up. Puck is loose amongst the whole lack of legs. They're trying to dig it free. Link later bumped off the play, went down the corner. Puck picked up by Hull. Here's a pass to Bacher. He'll break off the center, dishes it off the stem, steps down the lane, shot on target off Jamin's glove. Sylvester in there. This has been by far the best bomber line tonight. And they got the goal. Walker can't knock it down. Picked up by Evans. Sends it back at football territory. Full sale change here by Kindersley. Here's the pass up to the left side for Sylvester. English will get a stick on that. Over the glass and out of play. 136 to go. What a quick opening period here tonight. Yeah, flying high, but that's playoff hockey. You know what? High pace, high action. And this line of Sylvester and Bockler doing right. Cohen Sam's doing a great job right now of getting the rushes. But got to give credit to the Clippers. They're doing a good job of shutting down some of the some of the big players here on the Bombers, like Lees and Anderson. Had a few opportunities. Have not been there. able to really get going. No, exactly. So Clippers got to give credit where it's due. Great on the forecheck and great job shutting down the Bombers' top two scores. Well, the Lees, Anderson, and Pichadino lines up. There, Mueller and Anderson at each other in the face-off circle again. Austin Mann is commenting about that to start the game. I think Brock Mueller might be more of a bit of a shadow maybe on him this series. I mean, I'm sure he'd love to score some goals, but. I'm sure Mueller, one of the guys, has stepped up and said, I can take Anderson. You need those guys to play good defensively in the playoffs, and he's been sticking to them pretty good here in the opening period. Puck knocked down in Flint Flon territory. Justin Lees gets it out. Looking for Anderson at center. Diaz got it. Throws it to the left side. Tanchuk tried to pick that one up. He, Anderson has it now to Pechadino, racing down the middle of the ice. But Anderson for the Clippers broke it up. Picked up, will hold it in. Tanchuk shot. Oh, he fanned on it. What a chance that was. Brock Mueller back the other way to center. And McNutt catches him with a body check. Less than a minute remaining in the opening period. Here's Pichinino for Flint Vaughn at center. Perlinger took it from him. Puck left it back in the Flint Vaughn zone. Bombers get it back to Niven at center. Stripped away that time by Smith. Fired back in Flint Vaughn territory. Grabbed back with the goal by McNutt. McNutt will hang on. Olison will come back and pick it up. And he can fly. Colin Olsen to center ice. Lost the handle. Perlinger steals it. Tried to get it in for Mack. Egan there to grab it. Here's big man Egan for Flynn Flunk. He'll pick it up. Big man Egan to center. Lost the handle again. Can't get it back. Perlinger with the steal. Up the left side. It's the Perlinger brothers going to work. As that was uh, Zachary to oh, Colby. Yeah. And a 
Collision here deep inside the Flint Flon zone between Perlinger and Noah Hool. We got a holding penalty coming up here, I think, against the Flint Flon Bomber D-Man. Yeah, that's against Poole. I think he might have missed it there. He might have been looking down, but Poole essentially just kind of tried to pull a fast one, pull him from the side of the jersey. He just yanked him. You'll see here. Just absolutely yanked him down to the ground. So Jim's custom doors uh, penalty kill coming up here with just 10.8 seconds to go. And that'll be the key for Flint Flon, obviously, Austin. When the faceoff kill the 10 seconds, give yourself a bit of a breather coming up for the second period. Yeah, no, exactly. They, their penalty kill has been good all year, but this is when it really needs to step up. But good job on Kindersley so far. Not really taking any penalties except for that coincidental minor. Alexi Sylvester to take the faceoff here against Inglis, deep in Flint Flon territory, right in the goal center, Laser Hume. Second power play tonight, the Clippers win the draw. Comes back to the Graves. Over to Inglis, his shot. That got blocked by Buckner. He'll get it out. And that's going to do it for the opening period here tonight. And who would have thought that the Clippers would almost double the Bombers in shots in the opening period? Yeah, like I said, if you're the Clippers and you said you're going to be leading the Bombers almost by double their shots in the first period, you'd be pretty happy with that. But you know what? Bombers playing some pretty good defense. Maybe turnover a little too much in their own zone. But finding the good opportunities. Every shot they take has been a good shot with rebound potential. And they may only have seven shots, but they've been seven good shots. Kindersley also getting some good looks, but maybe a few more rush shots. They had those good looks down low right at the doorstep earlier on, but right now both teams getting the good opportunities, but I think Kindersley offensively may have a little bit of the edge. Well, their forecheck's working for them, and they're causing the Bombers to, uh, you see some Clippers, Brock Mueller not happy. He took a stick in the face there against Carter Anderson. He was talking to the referee before he left the ice, but again, it's a great system they're playing. They're forechecking well, they're, and again, you can't put the puck up the middle of the ice. I mean, you got to dump it off the boards. you got to dump it off the glass. They're getting in on them. We saw, you know, uh, Linklater go in and, and Chase picked up right after. You don't have any time to think. That, I think, is one of the keys that we see down the stretch. you got to pressure the Bomber defense. The Clippers have done that. A good opening period for them, and they've done a heck of a job shutting down that Bomber first line. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The first period scoring summary, and, of course, we'll have a chat with uh, the SJHL Defense for the Year, Noah Hool, as well our Northland Ford Flint Flon Bomber player profile. But you know what? Kindersley might be down a goal. If you're uh, Clayton Jarlene, you got to be thrilled with that opening period. Oh, how could you not? Like I said, they've had lots of good scoring opportunities. Harmon Laser Hume, one goal of the year for a reason, but they're getting lots of good looks, like you mentioned. They're four checks. They're giving the Bombers no r room to breathe. It's going to be interesting to see what Mike Reagan does to make adjustments to that. Like I said, it's going to be more of a chess match here in the second period. But like you said, tons of action. And the Flint Flon Bombers... Only have seven shots, but been seven good shots. Kindersley Clippers, though, just been ferocious with the intensity. They know they don't maybe have as many high-skilled players, so what do they do instead? They exchange it with the intensity and the hard work, and that's what they're doing right now with the four check. And a very good game plan. We'll take a break. The first intermission show for the co-op coming right up. Flint Flon leads at one nothing. Jacob Bacchus first in the postseason here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. And a brutal hit into the ball. Seven. Shockwave through the ring. They'll need to Kit. send for shockwave therapy at full range therapy and curating for sure. Pain reduction, restoration of movement, that's just what's needed here. With stem cell activation accelerating the healing of bone, muscles, and tendons. Better call or go online for an appointment because Shockwave is ideal for everyone who battles everyday and injury pain. Win the pain game against chronic headaches, injuries, arthritis, neck, back pain, and more. Book a Shockwave appointment with Mark at FullRangeTherapy.com. Your transformation awaits. McDonald's is a proud supporter of sports and hockey in the north and I welcome you to stop by any time of the day for all their tasty menu items. Whether it's breakfast, including the delicious McMuffin sandwiches, the bacon agar, sausage agar, egg McMuffin, and hot cakes. Lunch and supper, they've got you covered with Big Macs, Quarter Pounders, Quarter Pounder BLT, the McChicken, Crispy Chicken, and the McNuggets. And don't forget about the value meal as well. Their menu includes the McDouble and the Junior Chicken. Use the McDonald's app and order online to collect points for free items and free meals. That's McDonald's. Donald's and Flint Flon, the drive through open daily starting at 7 a.m. Guaranteed bad mood. Any day one of your appliances breaks down. Grrr. 
That's why you should purchase your next major appliance at Creighton Furniture and make it a Maytag. Maytag kitchen appliances, washers and dryers, and other durable appliances are built to handle your daily chores with ease, keeping your food cold, your dishes clean, and your dinner hot. Maytag makes dependable appliances backed with a 10-year limited parts warranty. And if something does go wrong, Creighton Furniture will be there to fix it. Shop appliances at Creighton Furniture and keep your smile all day. You're on. And welcome back to the opening intermission uh, for the North of 53 Consumers Co-op. First period scoring summary, just the one goal by Jacob Bockler. First of the playoffs, Alexi Sylvester, the assist, and uh, came early, 259 in. And again, I think Jane will probably wants that one back, but that's why you got to shoot the puck. And uh, Bockler can do that in the line, over the line, and I don't think he was expecting him to shoot that quickly. As I certainly wasn't. I think everybody on the ice was fooled, with the exception of Bockler, who's got so uh, many tremendous offensive skills. So a big goal for him. Hopefully gets the monkey off his back a little bit. And uh, certainly Flynn Flon uh, gets a one up lead after one after being, uh, let's face it, probably outplayed in that opening period. Uh, outshot 13-7. And uh, too many turnovers. And a big, big factor in this game. The Bombers got a little bit better as it went on. Face-offs. Kindersley has, I bet you they won 75% of the draws in the first period. No, I, I think that's accurate, Robin. Exactly. You, and you know what? Face-off is a big part of puck possession. If you you got to win those if you want to have those Especially opportunities. Especially in your own zone. Exactly. And you, and you see it's clearly the proof is in the pudding right now with the, with the triad realty shot clock. Kinnersley has the more shots. They're getting the more puck possession. Now, when Bombers have the puck, they're doing a great job. But they got to kind of hunker down on winning those face-offs. Rather than that, Bombers defensively playing pretty solid. They're letting Kinnersley have some decent rushes. They've turned it over a few times. But right now... I think Kindersley has the offensive edge with the Bombers, still putting on a good show, but just need to kind of maintain possession a little longer, especially on those face-offs. Well, the big key will be killing off that minute 50 of the uh, second Kindersley power play to start the second period. So, again, Jacob Bockers first of the postseason. Sylvester, the assist at 2.59. Shots 13-7 in favor of Kindersley to try at Realty uh, shot clock, and Kindersley 0 for 1 on the power play, and pre pretty much a full two minutes, a minute 50 when we come back for the second here tonight. Uh, when the Bombers led after one period of play this year in the regular season, 27-3-1 when Kindersley trailed after one period of play here in the regular season. Their record was 7-16-3. But like I said, if you're Clayton Jardine, you got to be pretty happy with that opening period here tonight. We'll take another break. Come back with our Northland Fort Flint Fawn Bomber Player Profile, the SJHL Defenseman of the Year, Noah Houle. What a year he had. He's off to Lindenwood. He gets the SJHL defense for the year, and he's hoping to culminate that with another long football bomber playoff run. So we'll see. He'll join us next as we get, uh, of course, more from the intermission for the co-op coming up here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. There's there what like new familiarity. You know, like a lost track from your favorite old band. Okay. Fresh but well acquainted, just like the North of 53 co-op. Staple and gourmet items you know and love, friendly staff who will treat you right, and the co-op always has new items or something you may have missed that's new to you. You can get a tin of beans and milk anywhere, but you can't find the feeling of new familiarity just anywhere. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Northland Ford proudly supports the Flint Fawn Bombers in the SJHL playoffs, and we know they'll play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 45 years and counting. Northland Ford is helping the community cheer on the Bombers as they fight to bring a championship back home. Ten seconds. seconds. And will provide you with the best selection to choose from in the North for the North. Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. You're on. Welcome to our first intermission, our uh, Northland Fort Flint Fawn Bomber Player Profile, the SJHL's Defenseman of the Year, Noah Hull. Uh, Noah, uh, congratulations, well-deserved. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. It's you know, been a great year for you individually. You got the course of scholarship to Lindenwood, led the uh, the league in scoring for defensemen. We're in the top ten, one of the few defensemen to do that all year. And now uh, this SJHL Defenseman of the Year. Uh, how good of a year uh, has this been for you in your hockey career? Uh, it's definitely number one. You know, it's been a great year. Um, lots of fun with the guys, and I gotta say say thank you to all my teammates because it wouldn't be possible without them. Let's throw it up. Eh? I mean, I know these individual awards are great, but let's face it, it's uh, it's a team sport, right? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Let's talk about the playoffs. Noah, they're finally here. Are you glad the regular season's over? <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, we're really excited for playoffs, and I think we'll we'll be really good. So yeah. Team kind of struggled a little bit down the stretch. Was just a case of. Uh, Going through the motions was it tough because he didn't really have anything left to play for. Can you kind of uh, paint a picture for you what kind of happened here the last dozen games or so? 
Yeah, you know, I think that kind of explains it. Um, we had first place log, so, I mean, you know, we want to win every game, obviously, but it's it's difficult to find a challenge every game when you know you're already first, and, yeah, it's it's not an excuse, but, yeah, I think that's kind of why. What about you yourself? Was it was it tough for you to get motivated the last two games of the regular season? I, I would say, yeah, it was, it was hard uh, to find, like I said, like a, a new challenge and something, like, to push us every day. But we're super, super excited for the playoffs, and we can't wait. You know, the one thing is, this team did struggle down the stretch, but you still finished first. You still have home ice advance throughout the playoffs and did a, a number of good things. It, you know, it's so easy to focus in on the negative. Was it tough for this group or down the stretch because you weren't playing your best hockey to kind of forget all the great things that have happened this year? Yeah, for sure. Like, um, we had the, the bomber record tied and, and stuff like that, so we, we can't forget all the good things we did. And, you know, we kind of, yes, we kind of forgot, uh, like, how good we are in our swagger, but we definitely have to find that back for, for playoffs. And saying that, I mean, you might be playing an eight-seeded team, but we know it's a brand-new ball game. Everybody starts off at zero again. Kindersley, a team that played you pretty tough here, you know, at the end of the year. Uh, well, what's the mindset going in? Let's face it, they're a huge underdog, but we know the playoffs, anything can happen, especially in the SJHL. Yeah, you know, I think the the key is to play simple and, uh, you know, get get hard on them and really show them, like, the true bombers and get some shots on net and stuff like that. Um, I don't think there's really a secret for playoffs hockey. Uh, it's just really it comes down to the nitty-gritty. A little bit different for this team, too. They, you're used to starting on the playoffs. I mean, uh, starting on the road in the playoffs, it's very rare that this team's opened up at home the last little while. What does that feel like? It's definitely exciting. Um, I think the town is pumped, and we are pumped, so it's it's really exciting, yeah. And you got a taste of it last year, and boy, this place, uh, it, you played a lot of hockey uh, in a lot of different places. Is there any place more special come playoff time than the Whitney Forum? No, th there's no way. And when you say that, I think about Game 7 against Estevan. I think that was probably my favorite when uh, Dupereau scored that goal. It, it was so awesome. I, I loved it. I think that's a, probably a memory that nobody will ever forget. Uh, you know, you, uh, can you take me back to what was said in the locker room heading out for the overtime? Do you remember what was said in the overtime? Because it happened so fast coming out here for the extra period. Do you remember what was said in the room with your guys before you came out? I don't really remember, no, but it was probably like play simple, trust our abilities and, and stuff like that. And that goal was, was crazy, so it, it was unbelievable for sure. Wildest hockey moment you've ever been a part of? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hopefully a few more here this year, but uh, all in all, a, a great year for you again, Noah. Like we said, capped off with that SJHL Defenseman of the Year. Were, were, were you taken back by it? Were you thinking that it might go your way this year? Were you really thinking much about it? Um, you know, honestly, I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, I just came back here and was trying to get the best out of the year, and it, you know, I'm glad that it, it went really well, so yeah. A little bit different position for you, too, this year. You know, maybe more of a leadership role with the team this year. What are you looking to bring to your team here tonight and throughout this uh, postseason run? Um, I think, uh, you know, play fast, some good first passes, maybe a good few shots on net, uh, play good defensively, obviously. That's the, the main key. But, yeah, just be a leader out there and, you know, yeah. Do you think this team needs to be a little bit more patient as a whole, let things kind of come? It seemed like to me, especially in the Humboldt series, maybe one guy trying to do too much. you got so much fire, offensive firepower on this team. Six guys in the top 12 in league scoring. I mean, it's not like this team can't score. Is it maybe trying to take things, be a little bit more simple, not just yourself, but the team as a whole? Yeah, yeah, I think we need to be more patient and do things more simple, and it'll definitely come our way for sure. It is a playoff time to wait for him, like we mentioned. You mentioned the big wild moment uh, against Estevan last year. Uh, anything else that you remember from last year's run? Well, obviously, um, Humboldt was really fun um, in five. I loved it. It was the support, the fans came uh, to Humble and even Battleford. It was awesome to, to see all those fans come and watch us on the road. It, it was really great. You mentioned the fans. How about all the people when the team would be leaving on the bus? They'd be on the side of the highway wishing guys well. It's probably something you never forget either, right? Yes, that, that, that's true. That's, that was really special too. I know I've asked you before. Uh, I'll ask you again because so many things change with you all the time. What is your best moment in your bomber career so far? Um, I would say right now is probably when um, I scored two goals against uh, Weyburn, but they said I scored a hat trick. That was pretty funny. And yeah. Did they take one of the goals away or no? Yeah, they did after, but after the game, they gave me the hat trick, and then a few hours after, they, 
take it out, but it was funny. So that would have been like your first career hat trick then? <laughs> yeah, it would have been, yeah. Well, you had it for a little while, then it took it back. It's an interesting moment. Outside of the Bombers, best hockey moment for you? Um, I mean, probably the first, my first goal. That was, that was really special, uh, of course, against Humboldt. Uh, yeah. You came over to the Bombers in a, in a mid-season trade last year. Best decision you ever made to come to Flint Flon? Yes, 100% for sure. Yeah. Again, congratulations. Uh, SJHL Defenseman of the Year, well-deserved again, Noah. Great uh, personal acolyte for you, but I know that you're after so much more with this team. So it all begins tonight. Good luck to you and the Bombers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Noah Hull, our Northland Ford Flint Flon Bomber player profile here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. Time out. Guys, look at the whiteboard. We're going to do this, and then we're going to do that. Okay. Jones, what are you eating? There's five seconds left in the game. Coach, what? It's just Jack Link's, and it's a great source of protein. Ah, just get back on the ice. Five seconds left. All tied up here, folks. Both teams getting ready for the face-off, and Jones has a piece of Jack Link's in his mouth. What is he doing? The puck drops. Jones grabs it. He has some room. He shoots. He scores! beverages and Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. You're up. And welcome back to Whitney Forum. It's a one nothing Flint Flon lead after one. The Clippers set to go in the power play. McDonald's out of town scoreboard tonight. Uh, all four SJHL playoffs are beginning. It's scoreless in the opening period between uh, Weyburn and Humboldt. Melville Battleford still 10 minutes away from starting tonight. Uh, Escobar Melford just about set to get underway as well. Manitoba Junior Hockey League playoffs tonight. The uh, Dauphin Kings, a 2-0 lead on the Blizzard late in the second. Steinbeck leads Diverville 1-0 in the second. Went through on top of Porter 3-1 in the second and after one. Burden a 2-0 lead on Nipawa. Clipper is on the power play at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows penalty kill as Linklater will carry the puck across the bomber line. They feed it back up front to Hill Big off the top of his skate. Puck rolled to the side of the net, grabbed here by Linklater. Linklater, some room out front, a shot, good save, rebound over top of the net. Clippers come close, Tanchuk races after it. Nice job to get it back to Silvestri at center. Silvestri by himself across the line, tries to get a shot away. Hill Big knocks it away from him, threw it in the corner, picked up here by Simon. Simon will skate with it up the ice. Oh, sorry, that's Diaz, 26, they have Simon on the uh, sheet here. Oh, it's, I see it's uh, reversed. Anyway, Diaz... Uh, up the right side, puck will uh, bounce off a player, go up into the Humboldt bench. And blown down with a minute one to go in the power play. The Clippers had a, probably the only thing they haven't done well is offensive zone time in the power play. Flint Flon's done a good job getting the puck out. Bombers done a great job right now on the penalty kill. Let's see if they can keep it up. Base off back in the Flint Flon zone, off the draw. Inglis goes down. Puck lifted up the boards. Here's Pichadino. Oh, he had leads. It could have been a two-on-one here. Broke it up here by DeGray, DeGraves. Good job by Pitchino for some back of the goal. Puck picked up here by Inglis. Inglis will skate with it to center. Here comes Inglis across the line. Back to Brock Mueller. Mueller feeds it back out front. Pass over to uh, the Clippers. Got knocked down in front that time by Chow. Got a piece of it anyway. Mueller back of the goal. Sends that pass to Taylor. To Inglis along the boards. Back to Taylor. Here's Inglis. Blue line for DeGraves. His shot partially blocked by Pitchino. 20 seconds to go in the Clipper power play. Taylor to the Graves. Top of the left circle, a chance for Anderson. He ripped it wide. Inglis will knock it down. He'll keep it in. Inglis hangs on. Back out to the Graves. There's a shot again. And Harmon leaves the hill looking pretty sharp. We'll grab that. Brock Mueller, look out. Getting into it with Aiden Chow. We got another clipper down on the on his keister. But a good job by the Bombers keeping everything to the outside. No, great job covering up those shooting lanes and keeping them to the outside as far as possible. Still a great shot there by the Clippers. But Hartman, Laser, Hughes. Well, that's the best they've looked on the power play tonight. Oh, for sure. That was the actual z only time they've had real zone time and some pressure. But Hartman, Laser, Hume, you know what, did a great job of being able to see that puck through the traffic. Easy glove save for him. Mack against Silvestri. Face off the left of Laser, Hume. Eight seconds to go in the Kindersley power play of the Jim's Tufts of Doors Flint Flon Bomber penalty kill. Back to blue line. He'll make a drive. Didn't miss by much. Puck kind of bounced on him a little bit. Puck picked up by Blocker. He's tripped up. Down the ice it goes. Pool out of the box. And coming out to get it is Jamin. He'll play it in the corner to Hillbig. So Flint Flon pretty good so far. Have killed both Kindersley Clipper power plays. Here's a drop pass. Picked up by Mack. Tried to get to the front end. He fell down. Still got a hold of it. Shoveled it wide. Mack off the side of the goal. 
Good work by him, boy, another guy that won't give up. Bombers have it. Here's Silvestri. Skates with it to center. Alexi Silvestri across the Clipper line, fanned on it. Got it back, ripped that wide. Bakker, the goal scorer, will pick it up deep in the zone. Semp is tied up back of the net. They'd love for him to get going offensively. Smith took it from him. Circles back in his own zone. Around the boards it goes. Taylor chipped it ahead. Bombers intercept. They throw it back in, but right on the stick that time is Taylor. Taylor bumped off the play. Puck a roll back inside Flintflon territory. Clippers get it. Fired on target that time by Taylor. He's had a couple nice uh, moments tonight. Flintflon will try to bring it out. Bax knocked away from him. He'll get it back. Here's Anthony Bax to center right. Picked up by Egan. Chipped back in this time for Olison. Olison tries to get away in the corner this time from Schrader. Puck will go back of the Clipper net. Racing after at that time is Matt Egan. Egan to the front net trying to jam it in. Stick save made by Jamin. Puck is loose in front of his net. It's cleared to the board. Picked up by Olison. A chance. Save Jamin. Puck is loose. Flip one after it. Can't get it to go. And a big goal line scramble. But great goaltending here by Cody Jamin. And the lunch pail line here of Egan Olafson going to work here. And, and Niven as well, who's lost his jersey, looking oh for a penalty. Gosh. You know what? Next to the Silvestri line, this has been their best line. It's the second best line for football tonight. They've done a great job getting physical and really kind of rivaling the play style here of the Clippers. Getting in their face, getting physical. And Riley Niven. Riley Niven looks like Oh, and now Olafson's trying to step in there and protect Riley Niven. Taylor and Olafson getting in it. Niven. Looking like he got mucked in front of the, uh, the bomber. And now we got Egan pushing and shoving down the other end of the ice here with uh, Elzen. It's playoff time. Things have picked up. But a great opportunity by the Bombers to try to jam that puck. And you got to get to the net. you got to sometimes score the ugly goals for the playoffs. No, and you know, I think that's what the Bombers haven't had enough of this season, I think. It's kind of those really greasy, gritty, dirty goals right in front. Puck is loose. No one knows where it is. And they just kind of toss it in. Right there, a great job by the Bombers to force some pressure right at the doorstep. Great, great job by Jamin, but Bombers, great pressure right there, and they need some more of that. 16.40 to go in the second period. 17.9, the tried Realty shot clock in favor of Kindersley. So Flint found out shooting the Clippers 2-1 so far in the second period. Bruner, Gilbert, and Joey Lees will go to work with Tanchuk and back to the back end. The Bombers win the draw. This is Gilbert. Throws that out front. Picked up here by the Clippers. Nice pass to center ice. Grabbed here by Linklater. He's quickly across the line. He falls down. Puck underneath him, but he got it deep in the foot one zone. Bombers try to dig it free. Gilbert in there. Can't find the handle. Here's Joey Lees for foot in the center. He'll poke it in. Gilbert will try to chase it down. Jamin going to come out of his net. Around the boards it goes. Hilbert plays it back here to Evans. Penalty coming up against the Bombers again. As Kinnerson will get it up the ice, not sure, did you see the call in behind the play? I think, it, yeah, it was the Gruner kind of hit him into the boards there. I thought it was a pretty clean play, but I guess the ref thought differently. So a third straight power play of the night for Kindersley. And Gruner better keep quiet here, like we've been talking. you got to keep quiet. Did they hand out? Did he take a 10-minute misconduct as well? No, I guess they got the wrong guy. Oh, okay. Joe so, Bear's gone in. So maybe it was Joe Bear. Well, Gruner thought it was him. He sure was screaming and yelling all the way. So it was Gruner. I who guess got it the, worked. It was Gruner who got the hit back there. So the penalty wasn't on Gruner back there because I thought that hit looked pretty clean. I could see why he was upset with that one. Kendersley back on the power play for the third time tonight. Like we mentioned, they had the eighth best power play in the regular season. 0 for 2 so far. The Bomber number one penalty killing in. hoping to keep things going here tonight. Number one all year long wound up at 87.7%. Face off in the Bombers zone. The Clippers win the draw. That's Taylor, who was great last time. Feeds it back to the blue line. Held in here by Anderson. In the corner for Mueller. Big Brock Mueller trying to work his way out front. Mueller falling down. Got a shot off the side of the net. Clip one can't clear. The Graves cut it off. Throws it back off. front. the one-timer. Blocked there by McNutt. But right back to uh, the the, uh, the Bombers get the uh, turnover. Pichonito lost the handle. The Graves will grab it at his blue line. And he'll pick it up and start to make his way up the ice. Here's the Graves pass to Inglis. Inglis wasn't sure where it was. It was in his skates. Knocked away. Pichonino looking for the loose puck. Pichonino! Short-handed down the left side. Gets a chance and rips it over top of the net. Buckle roll back to the bomber. Blue line. McNutt will feed it back. That's the Wahool. Ends up hitting a skate. Grabbed here by Anderson at center. 
Plays it back to the Graves. A minute three to go in the Clipper power play. Having a hard time getting set up here. They'll try again. That could be an icing call. It is. Great penalty killing by Flint Fawn. That's been the best part of their game here so far. Absolutely. And a big credit to Justin Lees and Anthony Piccinino, who all season have done a really great job on the penalty kills, not only stopping the other team, but getting goals. And you know what? Anthony Piccinino may not be the biggest guy on the ice, but oh boy, does he ever play like he's like he's like 6'1 or 6'2. That's kind of how he plays out there. Fast and physical. Definitely not a scare to go against bigger guys. 56 seconds to go in the Clipper power play. 15 minutes remaining. In the second period, it's another Jim Cuffton Doors Flint Fawn Bomber penalty kill. Mueller loses his stick, and DeGraves will carry the puck up to center. He'll drop it back. This is Linklater. Stick handles across the bomber line. Linklater will hang on to it. Linklater's got it. Raider X outside the zone, and he'll make goes back to get it. The bomber fans cheer that. 36 seconds to go in the penalty. Diaz. Can't get going. Dropped it back to center ice. Here comes Linklater back across the bomber line. Oh, looks like he had the D-man beat. Almost got by him. Bouncing puck picked up by Olison. And he'll dump it down the ice. Here comes Jamin out of his net again. Played it ahead to Diaz. Diaz has got it. Pass up the right side. Right on the tape that side. Back up front. Linklater. Broken up by Olison. And he'll set the line to the ice. Ten seconds to go in the Clipper power play. Danger is going 0 for 3 here tonight. He'll be come back to get it. Hilbig, back of the goal for Diaz, penalty over, and Kindersley 0 for 3 on the power play as Gilbert races to the bomber bench. Here's Diaz, back of his net. Lifts it up the middle, puck is going to roll wide, it should be an icing call. It is, and Noah Hull will touch up, so you'd like to think that Flint will be getting the next power play here at some point. You would like to hope so, but great job by the Bombers there, really, like you said earlier, keeping them to the outside, making it hard for them to find the lanes. And honestly, it's, it uh, may even seem like they're doing a bit better of clogging up those lanes when they're down a man on the penalty kill. They're doing a great job of keeping them to the outside. Inglis to take the face off here against Olus and deep the Clipper territory. Back to five aside. Niven back out there. He'll rim it around the board. Here comes Big Eight and Chow racing in after it. Throws it in. That's intercepted by Inglis. Back to center. McNutt dropped it back here to uh, Egan. Plays it back to Chow. Beats it back to McNutt. Not a lot of great offensive chances for Flint Fun so far tonight. Perliger stopped that one. Flint Fun back in their own zone again. Here's Chow. Ahead to Egan. He'll chip it in. But we're signaling icing. They're going to get it. And once again, the McDonald's out of town scoreboard. No score in the opening period. Estevan and Melford. A lot of people think that maybe Estevan can put a pretty good scare into them. Weyburn Humboldt uh, scoreless as well. Likewise, Belleville battle for a lot of those games just getting underway due to that stupid time change. Yeah, a lot of exciting games. And Melville Battleford, that's going to be the series everyone wants to watch, too, on the SJHL polls. Melville favored to win, beat over Battleford. Face off inside the Flynn Fawn zone. Taylor lining up against Olison. It's one nothing Flynn Fawn. A real early goal by Jacob Bacher tonight, the only offense so far. Aiden Chow, back of the bomber net, able to get away from his guy. Bombers will play it ahead. Here's the quick pass to Olison. Olison will bring it in wide here on Demo. Carried it in, but Demo gets some support. Boy, Taylor's been fantastic for Kindersley tonight. He comes back to help out. Gets it back to center. He'll big will pick it up. He'll rip it inside the Flintwan zone. There's McNutt. Up the boards to Piccinino. Piccinino. Head it to Anderson. Shot got blocked. Anderson gets it back. He's across the line offside. And blown down with 12.48 to go in the second period. 18-9. Looks like he broke his stick on that one, too. No surprise, though, is there's about five broken sticks a game this year. But 18-9, the Tron Realty shot clock in favor of the visitors tonight. But a big face up outside the Clipper Blue Line with 12.48 to go as uh, Linklater out. Linklater doesn't leave the ice, I guess. He'll take the face off against Justin Lees. Bombers win the draw. Tanchuk hammered and in. Took a wicked hot came right back up front, but Diaz is there. Diaz off the boards. Anderson gets a piece of it. Here's Justin Lees. Justin Lee gets a hold of it, shoots it, rips it over top of the net. Good chance there for the bomber captain. But Blunt keeps it in. Piccinino, good work in the corner. Piccinino tried to shovel it out front, but Linklater intercepts. He feeds it back to Hillbig at center. He'll cross the bomber line. Tanchuk tried to get a stick on that. He does. Back of the goal. Bax is there. Evans on top of him. Puck squirts free. Bax pokes it ahead. Anderson flipped it outside the zone. So Grace has got to get back. He does. And He'll play it back to Diaz. Diaz gets that one over to uh, Inglis. He's taken down hard. Puck intercepted. Picked up here by Joey Lees. 
Joey Lee's for Flint Flon gets a hold of it, flips it back outside the zone. Jumps up over the stick that time of Hilbig. He'll go back and get it. Feeds that pass. Over to Smith. Gruner got a piece of it. Mueller in there trying to grab it. Puck comes free and makes its way back in Clipper territory. They'll get a hold of it. They'll dump it back in the Flint Flon zone. Icing again. Backs will touch up. Back of that really scrambly second period. This Clipper defense has been doing a great job in the neutral zone, like you mentioned. Really making the Bombers scramble quite a bit on the attack. And just, yeah, really that one only shot there by Justin Lees. But I think the Bombers got to do a bit better job of kind of finding those high slot shots. Doesn't matter if there's a guy there. may not be the highest percentage, but you just need to start getting some stuff on net. Bombers win the draw. It comes back to left. There's a shot on that. Rebound. Fired wide. Good chance there for Gilbert. And maybe they hurt you down at ice level. One of their better chances so far in the second period. Brock Mueller. Sends that back up the wing. Picked up by Anderson across the bomber line. And now Kindersley's offside. And Inglis knows it as he bows his head. Mueller getting into it here with uh, Gruner. And Brock Mueller, no doubt about it, a fire in his belly. I'm sure nobody in that Kindersley team was looking as forward to this opening game tonight as he was. Oh, absolutely. You know what? He's played many games here in the Whitney Forum. Must have been a very different feeling for him to come here and be on the receiving end of the Whitney Forum. Well, and like Clayton Jardine mentioned, his half of the SJHL coaches, so he's got more playoff experience than anybody else on that team, so they're going to lean on him heavily. Mackle gets set for the faceoff against Jacob Walker. He's got the one goal here tonight. Faceoff outside the Flintstone Bomber blue line. Bombers win the draw. This is Lepper for the Bombers. To center. He'll dump it in. Jamin likes to wander out of that net. He'll come out again. Around the boards it goes. Kennersley tries to get it out. They'll flip it ahead. Mack can't pick it up. But he gets a return pass by Perlinger. Here's Mack. A good move. Lost the handle to Walker. Chance for Silvestri. Jumps on it. Trying to come back to Semp at center ice. That's knocked away. Bombers will feed it back in. There's a turnover for the net. Semp has it. Back up on a chance for Silvestri. Drilled it wide. Alexi Silvestri, great chance. A rare turnover by the Clippers in their own zone. And almost comes back to haunt them. Picked up back in the goal by Demo. Around the board. School intercepted it. Some pressure here by Flynn Flynn. Silvestri tried to send it back down low. Mack with the interception. Then he lost the handle to Hool. Hool pinching in. Trying to make something happen. Tied up back of the goal with uh, Schrader and Mack. Silvestri comes up with it. Back to Niven. Niven will hold it in, knocked it down. Now he'll bring it in. Drop it in the corner. Here's Silvestri to the point. Leper shot. Deflects over top of redirection that time by Vockler. Puck is loose. Big body check there. Niven going to get a bad penalty here. But he might take some company with him. They come over. Uh, Niven a bit of a cheap shot here on Perlinger. He cracked. Uh, he nailed him in the corner with a high elbow. And a few of the Kindersley Clippers take an exception to that. They've grabbed a hold of Divin, but no, he might get two and a ten. Yeah, I can see that. And maybe remind people, this is the team where the Bombers had the goalie fight earlier on in the season. So but what folks take a penalty here for Austin, and this is not the smart way to play. Oh, absolutely not. That was just that was a silly penalty. No reason for that. He might get lucky. I think he might be taking somebody with him. Because yeah. they reacted to it and went in there after. Schrader was the guy that got hit. He's in the box. And we'll see how they sort this one out. We've got uh, Niven down on the ice after he threw the high hit. A couple guys went in and tackled him in the corner. So we'll see how they'll... Here comes the replay, I guess. And the Bombers were pressing to try to keep the bucket. There's the hit there. Oh, yeah. He caught him up high. And then you got a couple guys come over. So they're discussing things. We'll take a break. We're at the midway point in the period. It's one nothing Clinton fun, but... We'll see what happens with these extra penalties. More from the Whitney Forum coming up on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your Claire. From the expertise in the planning, okay. the quality of the build, to the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Family owned and operated with experience. Ten seconds. Visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. You're on. Four straight power play for the Kindersley Clippers trying to tie this game as Kevin will take a penalty here. We'll get Austin to listen for the penalties. I think it might be two of the ten. We'll hear it. Bombers up and down the ice. The Clippers did get a couple guys in the box, but Flint Flong got the extra penalty. And that means four straight power plays for Kindersley. The Graves will bring it up the ice. Here's the pass to Anderson. Dropped it back. They'll come back out front to Mueller. In the corner, back out front. They had Anderson open, and he missed the pass. What a chance. 
Puck fired off the glass. It gets away from DeGrange. Rolls in on target. And the save is made here by Jamin. DeGrange will take over. A minute 20 to go in the Kindersley power play. 9.25 second period. The fourth Jim's custom doors and windows penalty kill of the game. Clippers move it back to blue line. Nice job by DeGrange. Throws it back up on Anderson. Side of the goal. Bueller a chance. Good save. Laser Hume rebound. DeGrange knocked it down. He'll keep it in. Oh, stolen by Silvestri. Alexi Silvestri with Luke Lepper. A two-on-one short hand. And Silvestri hangs on. The Lepper. Oh, he fired it. Why did that? Jamin get a piece of that? Did Jamin get a piece of that puck? Well, holy cow, what a play that was. A great feat by Silvestri. I think Jamin got a piece of he that. He looked real close there, Rob. Back of the net, here's Bockler. Bockler will hang on, short hand in, Jacob Bockler. Still hanging on to it, looking for someone to give it to. If nothing else, killing some time anyway. 33 seconds remaining in the Clipper power play. Brock Mueller's got it. Bockler knocked to the ice. Pants. Yelling for a call. Mueller's got it. Brock Mueller will carry it to center. Now he'll take off the big, strong Brock Mueller in over the flint Fawn line. Brings it in, tied up along the boards here by Houle. Puck comes back to the bomber net, picked up here by uh, Gruner. Ten seconds to go in the power play. Here comes uh, Gruner racing with it to center. Gruner carries the puck in. Look out, he almost went coast to coast. I think he was surprised how much open ice he had. Still bring it in, and Flint Flon Bombers kill another. Wow, Kinder great power job. play. And had some good chances on the penalty kill. Anderson for Flint Flon been very quiet tonight. He's got the puck. Back to five aside, shovel it in for Mueller, but knocked away. This will force McNutt down in his own zone. There's McNutt. Into the corner this time for Niven. Niven will pick it up. Nice pass to feed it back to McNutt. Here's a good give and go to Piccinino the center. Piccinino across the line. Hey, got a shot. Jamin save. Big rebound up front. Lee Spadden on it. They try to get it back to Niven out front, but Smith will knock it away. Shots are 6-4 Clippers in the period. 19-11 in the game on the Tri Realty shot clock. Here's Linklater. Drop pass to Hillbig. A little bit behind him. Tamsha got a piece of it, couldn't get a hold of it cleanly though. Clippers dump it back in deep. Leper, who had that good chance moments ago. He'll bring it out. Here's the bank pass to Bockler. In across the Clipper line. Bockler hangs on. Shot got blocked. Lee's in there. Ties up here deep. Puck rimmed around the board to the right side, held in by Houle. Here's chance. Goes wide. Picked up, fired out. Leper got a glove on it, but it'll roll back to the bomber blue line where Houle has it. Back up the middle. Chipped in by Joey Lee's. Jamin will stop this. He'll hang on. 6.53 to go in the second period. It remains a 1-0 flip on lead. And just high pace across the board. And you're wondering about those penalties. It was actually Olofsson got two minutes as well for roughing and Niven got two. So no two and a ten. So twos across the board for uh, Luke Schrader as well. But Bombers doing a great job there. Finding the offensive opportunities with their man down. And two great opportunities there with Leper, and then on the rebound, Justin Lee's just couldn't get the stick on. And then also, that one with Gruner as well, he had tons of room, but great job on the penalty kill. Media timeout will take a break, just under seven minutes to go in the second period. It's a one nothing Flin Flon lead here on 102.9 CFAR and FlinFlonOnline.com. Claire, the proud supporter of sports and hockey. All right, sir. And I welcome you to stop by any time of the day for all their tasty menu items. Whether it's breakfast, including the delicious McMuffin sandwiches, the bacon agar, sausage agar, egg McMuffin, and hot cakes. Lunch and supper, they've got you covered with Big Macs, Quarter Pounders, Quarter Pounder BLT, the McChicken, Crispy Chicken, and the McNuggets. And don't forget about the value meal as well. Their menu is the double and the junior chicken. Use the McDonald's app and order online to collect points for free items and free meals. That's McDonald's and Flin Flon, the drive through open daily starting at 7 a.m. You're up. And welcome back to Whitney Forum in this uh, opening game of this SJHL quarterfinal series between the Kennedy Clippers and the number one seed of Flin Flon Bombers. Boy. Kindersley, a good effort here tonight. Uh, shooting Flint Flon 19 12 to try to realty shot clock down a goal, but they may look back tonight at those four squandered power play attempts because sooner or later, Flint Flon, the number one power play for the regular season, is going to get a chance. They got to get one soon. If they don't here, Rob, I'd be very surprised. Face off inside the Clippers zone. They win another draw. Boy, just a textbook work by them as they'll flip it in. Townshuck there to get it. Up the boards, got it out. Gruner trying to jump on that. I've actually been uh, pretty impressed with the way Gruner's played tonight. You talk about a sandpaper guy that's uh, digging deep. He's played well. That's why they brought him in. Though some experience, of course, from the Alberta League. Clippers try to poke that out front. So the back of the bomber net. Dax will whack at it. Trader races over. Keeps it in. Shot blocked that time by Joey Lees. And 
The puck will roll back down. It's Clippers zone. It's grabbed here by Demo. Back up the middle to Taylor. Broke it up here by Bax. He'll get it back to center. Schrader has it. Tried to get free. Throws it back across the bomber line. This is Bax. Band on that one. Gets it back. Puck will roll across the Clipper line with Gruner after it. Knocked away. And Vanden Elsen has it. Here's Vanden Elsen. Trying to put the needle to Perlinger. He got it to him. Perlinger took a hit, but he got it in deep. Then Vanden Elsen gets thrown by Bax in the corner. Pucks up to the far side. Picked up here by Hill. Make a chance. Look out. Off the right arm. We got another penalty coming up. Finally, football going to go on the power play here. As Bax is interfered with in front of the net. And we'll see if this high flying power play. Did Fudbot take a penalty of an extra one as well? Perlinger's going to go. They're going to continuously take two penalties. Wow. This should be huge. Van and Elson and Taylor are both in the box. And Fudbot's going to get a five on three for their first chance here tonight, at least it appears that way. And, of course, we'll wait uh, for the official uh, announcement here. But it looks like a five on three. The Clippers trying to figure out what's going on the bench there. They're coming on asking them. So there could be a misstep. No, there's two minutes up there. Five on three for Flint Swan coming up. Well, we said it was going to happen soon, Rob. Did we think it was going to be a five on three? Absolutely not. But now the Clippers got themselves in a position they don't want to be in. Five on three gear face off down in the Clippers end. Bob Wood, our Pepsi power play contestant, longtime Flint Swan Bomber supporter, gets his product at the gate with the Bomber score on the power play. Guess what? A 12-pack of Pepsi, courtesy of Arctic Beverages, your local dealer of Pepsi-Cola in northern Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Hull in for Bockler. Bockler hangs on. Back to Hull. Anderson, of course, 22 power play goals to lead the league in the regular season. He's in front of the net. They shell it to Bockler. Back up to Lee. That drive. Long save. Rebound. Anderson tried to jump on it, and he'll poke it to the blue line. Hull knocked it down. Played it in tight for Silvestri. Back to the blue line here for Lee. Here's Hull. Back out front to Bacher, poked away. Great defensive play that time by Linklater. And Lees will have to go back and get it. A minute 25 to go in the five on three. Justin Lees quickly to center. Here comes Lees, the bomber captain. Back to Anderson. Nice pass out front. So there's three of chats that got blocked. Anderson has it again. Dropped it back to Sylvester. Out front. They won't shoot it. Bull keeps it in. To Lees. Back to the front of the net that time for Bockler. Bockler. Pool, bad on it, not sure where it is. Walker knocked it down. Back up front to Anderson. He's thinking too quickly, too. It got away from him. Anderson hangs on. Back up front. Knocked down in front. That never made it through to Jamin. Bombers work it back to Hool. Here's Anderson. A shot like a bullet, but it goes wide. 47 seconds remaining in the power play. Hool. Lee shoots it. Blocked again that time. Great job by the Clippers. Hool. Anderson shoots. Jamin scores. No, it rolls in. Anderson on the power play. It hit Jamin, it hit the defense, but it went back in. And there it is, a five-on-three power play goal. Jamin stopped that puck and hit the deep end and ricocheted in. Wow. It literally, it looked like he stopped it there for a second, Rob. He did, it hit him, and it hit the defense, but it went in. Here's the replay, this is a strange one, watch it. Here's Anderson, who's going to get the uh, power play goal to make a 2 nothing shoots in here. That hits him, and I think it redirected and went back in. Wow. Off the defenseman and in, and the Bombers will take a 2 nothing lead, and the guy with 22 power play goals in the regular season has won the night. You can't go five, three on five against the Bombers. And looks like Kinners is taking another penalty here. Oh, my, oh boy. The great job there by the Clippers, though. They look so solid for about a, for the first half of that penalty kill. Great job blocking every shot. And even there on that goal, they block it, but still not enough. And Clippers still in the power play for another 30 seconds. So Carter Anderson will make it 2 nothing. Here comes Step across the line. Throws it in deep, intercepted by Perlinger. Bombers hold it in. Pichonino along the board. Here's Pichonino back of the goal. Back out front. Here's catch up chance, and he'll stand on that. Justin Lees will get the assist. So Anderson, like we said, 22 power play goals the regular season. He's got one of the playoffs tonight. And Flintbond leads it 2 nothing. Sanchez knocked it down. Held in by Sip. Signed the goal here for Pichonino. Back to Bulldog Tantric again. Across the line. It's not a chance. And Jamin kicked that one out back to five aside. Flint Swan one for two on the power play, but a big, big goal to take a 2 nothing lead. Bombers along the boards. Try to poke it back out front. Grabbed here by Taylor. He'll grab it to center. Three and a half to go in the second. For Taylor, hit hard as he gets across the line. 
Townshuk gets it back for Flynn Clark. Plays it back to Gruner. Gruner across the clipper line, hangs on, shot off straight over the glass and out of play. And 2 0. Flynn Kwan leads at 21 13. The Clippers lead the shots. The prior shot clock uh, tonight for Triad Realty. Great to have them back on board, by the way. And boy, Carter Anderson just uh, just an absolute missile when it goes off his stick. And now the Bombers, after that, definitely got the momentum swing that they needed. Even now, back to 5 on 5. See a little bit more pep in their step, putting those shots on net from distance. Off the face off, Nimmit trying to get free. The first get it back. Off the middle, it goes off of Leper. Puck will bounce and come back across. Well, I think it hit uh, that light, light just picture, behind yeah. the Teddy Hansen banner. So 3.07 to go. Great crowd here tonight. Look at that 50-50. $17,560. You took the words out of my mouth, Rob. I was just about to say, I wish I should have got a ticket before, but wow. Well, you, still have, you still have time. I guess I could go down a second intermission, you're right. I would highly recommend it. Lick Leonard takes the face off against Olsen up outside the Bomber Blue Line. A 2 0 flip on lead, a big 5 on 3 power play goal here by Carter Anderson in the second period. Bombers will just 14 shots in the game. It's been a good effort by Kindersley on the road, despite being down a couple of goals. There's Schrader back of his own net around the boards. Picked up here by Link later. Lost the handle, but Evans has got it. Look out, Demo! In behind the deep, Demo cutting in, and he fanned on it. Boy, he got alone out there. Nobody picked him up. The defenseman saw an opportunity, and he took it. Bombers break it up. This is Divin. He's got it at center ice, and he'll get a hold of it and flip it back in deep for Matt Egan. Matt Egan in the corner, tied up here by DeGrave. There's a body check there by Gilbert. He bumps with his guy. Not a lot of body checking in the way, but that was a good hit there. And look at it, got the turnover on the play. Good work here by Gilbert down low along with Jacob Bachler, who got the first bomber goal tonight. Sylvester circling in there as well. Fans coming to life, and Whitney Formy had a feeling that the Bombers could get another one. Just might explode. They dig away for it deep in Clipper territory. Bachler, Sylvester still on the boards with the Graves, and looks like uh, Linklater, the uh, Clipper captain, has got his stick in there. They do move it finally, and puck squirts free. Picked up here by Demo. And he'll lift it off the boards back in the football zone. There's Tansha. Chipped it back to Bax. Bax moved it ahead. Puck bounces in. Here comes Jamin out of his net. So that's great. Look out far to back. Jamin got back, and he could get caught. He doesn't want to come out to that often. you got to be careful. Inglis. Off the back to Mueller. Brock Mueller back out front. Nice pass. Back door for Anderson. And it just kind of got away from him. But a great feed there by Brock Mueller. Clippers get it back to Diaz. His long shot. That didn't miss by much. Hit a stick change direction. Justin Lees off the boards down the ice. And icing against Flynn Flon with one court team to go in the second period. A 2 0 Flynn Flon lead. A big five on three power play goal here by Carter Anderson. McDonald's out of town scoreboard. Humboldt have taken a 1 0 lead on Labor. No score. Melville Battleford here tonight. And the other game, Melford scored on Estevan, 1-0 with about 8 minutes remaining in the first period. Wow, pretty close games across the board. Early, but still very close. 1.14 to go here, 21-14. The shots in favor of Kindersley. The Tried Realty shot clock as Lees lines up for the faceoff here against Linklater. Bombers win the draw. No ribbon around the boards. Hillbig is there. Played it back in deep for Lees. Hillbig back out front. Look out, we got... Uh, the Clippers, uh, Evans knocked down, and Lee's back the other way with Gilbert. Lee's will dump it in. Jamin out of his own net, played around the board, loves to play that puck. Knocked down by Piccinino. He'll keep it in. There's a chance now for Anderson in the glove, and the save made by Cody Jamin. So 46.3 seconds to go. Extremely quick game here tonight. Very quick. It's almost 9 o'clock, and we're already at the end of the second period. It just kind of shows the pace between these two, these two teams and the eagerness. And Cody Jamin keeps coming out of the net quite a bit. It makes you think he almost think, got caught there the last. Do you time. think? Do you think he's going to pay for one of those eventually? Well, I think that might. Didn't that happen to him earlier here this year? It might have. Anyway, we'll see. Carter Anderson knocked it down. He tried to keep it in. Here's Chow at the blue line. His long shot. Look out! Oh my! Directs off target. Is it redirects off the D-man Demo? Or sorry, off the D-man uh, Diaz. And Jamin had to juggle that one. Well, you don't want to let in the puck uh, that late in the period. No, absolutely. Especially off your own player. Not something you want to do. They've already kind of had that happen today. So, uh oh, now some other stuff going on between Anderson and Perlinger. He's, uh, he hasn't been happy in the last couple of shifts he's been out there. 
But a 2-0 Flint Pond leader starting to close the gap on the shots. It's still 21-17 Kindersley on the Travioki shot clock. Face off back in Clipper territory. The leads, the Bomber captain are going to take the draw here against Inglis. Off the draw, McNutt. McNutt's first pass knocked down, gets it across for Chow. His shot! A good low one, but wide of the mark. Anderson running over Schrader at the corner. We talked about the Bombers wanting to be more physical. A big, big hit there by Carter Anderson. Meanwhile, Brock Mueller tried to come back the other way. Puck swatted away from him in the corner as he and Justin Lee battle it out. McNutt, back of the goal here for uh, Chow. He gets hit hard. He goes down, but still plays the puck ahead to Piccinino. Chow shake it up here. I think he wants to get off the ice. He takes down Schrader. But we're throw it back in front. Brock Mueller going to run out of time. He shoots the puck after the whistle. Look out. Uh-oh. And that's going to cause problems. Brock Mueller reffing the puck after the whistle. And they come over and converge on him. And we got uh, Anderson hauled down here. Boy, Anderson better be careful. He's going to get thrown out of this game. And somebody comes over at him. I think it's one of the Perling, or it's An- Zachary Anderson. So it's Anderson on Anderson. Zachary Anderson here for Kinnersley. I guess Carter Anderson has got the second big goal for Flint Pond in the power play. But boy, Tempers getting the best of the guys here at the end of the period, Austin. But it's the playoffs. Everything intensifies a thousand degrees. Oh, absolutely. That just shows how badly they want it. You know what? They're taking every shot they can. They're getting physical. And right now, if you're the Clippers, They've played a pretty good game so far, but see themselves down 2 nothing on the scoreboard. They must not be too happy. You can kind of see now those emotions, uh, all that flares coming out. They're trying to get under the Bombers' skin, but the Bombers doing a great job staying relatively composed. So a few stupid penalties here and there. But great still. period for Flint Pond, though. Not only they get the 5-on-3 power play goal, they hold Kinder's lead of four shots. We'll take a break. Second intermission show for the co-op coming up. The Bombers in front 2 nothing here on 102.9 CFAR and... FlintPondOnline.com. Clear. And a brutal hit into the seven. That sent shockwaves through the ring. They'll need to be sent for shockwave therapy at full range therapy in Creighton for sure. Pain reduction, restoration of movement, that's just what's needed here. With stem cell activation accelerating the healing of bone, muscles, and tendons. Better call or go online for an appointment because Shockwave is ideal for everyone who battles everyday and injury pain. Win the pain game against chronic headaches, injuries, arthritis, neck, back pain, and more. Book a Shockwave appointment with Mark at FullRangeTherapy.com. Your transformation awaits. Take advantage of the Maytag Dependable Savings Event on right now at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Till March 27th, save $150 with the purchase of two qualifying kitchen appliances. Or if you purchase three or more qualifying kitchen appliances, you can save $300. Get hundreds of dollars in savings just by shopping Maytag. Get that appliance that you've always wanted with the Maytag Dependable Savings Event at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Thank you for choosing Lily of Triad Realty to be your real estate agent. Your confidence in inviting Lily on your journey, whether buying or selling, means the world to her. Because of your love of Flynn Flan and you wanting to be a part of this community, Lily has been awarded the Silver Individual MLS Medallion Award for two years running. Flynn Flan has sold a record number of homes, and Lily is privileged to be part of a group that loves to call Flynn Flan home. Lily says, thank you for trusting me and for being part of making Flynn Flan such a great place to call home. You're on. And welcome back to the Whitney Forum, the second intermission show for the North of 53 Consumers Co-op for the Bombers. Uh, we thought maybe fortunate to get out of the first period with a one nothing lead, but uh, certainly played very well, killed off a number of Clipper power plays, and outshot the Clippers in the second period 10-4. So just the one goal, Carter Anderson, who of course was just absolutely explosive with the power play in the regular season, gets it going, a beautiful shot. Uh, Unfortunate for Cody Jamin goes off his defense, but an in, off his defense, but an in change direction. But got to shoot the puck. Good things happen. He gets it uh, his first of the playoffs to Dustin Lee's at the 15-27 uh, mark to give the Bombers a two nothing lead after two. Uh, like I said, shots were 10 for Flint Flon, so the Bombers a two period total of 17. Kindersley a two period total of 21. And I'm sure if I was to say to Clayton Jardine before the game tonight, they'd be out shooting Flint Flon 21-17 after two. I'm sure he would have taken that. Well, the Bombers making uh, good on a couple of opportunities. Again, Jacob Bockler early, and again, Carter Anderson on a nice power play goal. Five on three goal, too. You know, Bombers killed off four straight Clipper power plays, which I said might be something that comes back and haunts Kindersley tonight. And, and football, it wasn't even so much a football until the four power plays. 
Kinnersley hardly generated any good chances at all. I think just the one power play tonight, they had a few chances, but three of the four, they went nowhere. Oh, absolutely, and that's where kind of where Kinnersley is shooting himself in the foot right now. They're getting the man advantage opportunities. Like you said, they've had four power plays, and it's... And you know what? They're trying to get looks, but they can't even find good looks on the power play. So that's probably where their frustration is coming from. Once you start to get frustrated from those power, those missed power play opportunities, then that translates to bad five on five. Bombers need to stop getting these bad penalties. They're, they're not the greatest penalties. You know, there are some here and there you can get, but they they need to hunker down because eventually, if you give Kinnersley one or two more, they're gonna score on them eventually. So right now, Bombers doing a great job on the penalty kill, but they need to do a better job of staying off the penalty kill. And then the Kindersley Clippers, well, been fighting hard all game, but just having a hard time finding those quality scoring looks. Got to give credit to Harmon Laser Hume, though, doing a great job. And then Cody Jamin on the other end. Well, that one power play goal for the Bombers. He did a great job covering it. Unlucky bounce goes off the defenseman and in. So that's basically the story right now. We'll see what happens here for the third. If you're Kindersley, the quicker you get a goal, the better. And Because we've seen Flynn kind of collapse once in a while late in the hockey game. So we'll see. If you're Kindersley, I don't think they want to change much up. I think they want to stay out of the box for sure, but they've done, a, for the most part, a pretty good job. Pretty good discipline effort for them, and they're going to need to take advantage of any other opportunities that come their way. We'll see what happens. Flint Vaughn leads it 2 nothing. Jacob Bockler, an even strike goal late in the opening. Fred and Carter Anderson missed your power play during the regular season. Gets a power play goal again to make it a 2 nothing lead. Flint Vaughn, Bombers with a lead after two in the regular season, 36-0-2. But Kendersey trails after two. 5-21-2-1. We'll see what happens tonight. Big goal, though, by the Bombers with the power play late. They lead it 2-0. We'll take another break. Kenny Polichuk is going to join us. He, of course, is uh, heading that memorabilia committee. they got that beautiful showcase down the lobby. They've added a bunch of cool stuff, including a whack of stuff from the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame. He's going to talk about that and a few other really cool uh, items they've been able to come across and showcase here to the uh, wonderful folks that come and witness, of course, not only hockey games, but anytime in the Whitney form for whatever. Stop by and see it. You'll be impressed. Kenny joins us next. Second intermission show for the co-op continues right here at 1029 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com. It's the Clear. and the whining that I struggle with. The crazy family you home I have is perfect, but for the stomping and the whining. I'm sorry, son. We are watching Dad's big game and then our movie. You'll have to use the old TV in the basement for your games. No good? What do you mean no good? Okay, okay. I'll see what we can get for you and your friends at Shane's. Great news. Shane's carries a variety of Skyworth Google TVs made with affordability and decent graphics and sound in mind. Easy to use, pairs with your kids' tech, and you'll be happy with the price. Find Skyworth TV options at Shane's at the Atunike Mall and get rid of their stomping and your whining. Shane's. Watch. Listen. Play. Connect. Picture this, a home that welcomes you with open arms, where every room tells a story of comfort and security. Jim's Custom Doors and Windows, your local go-to windows, doors, and blinds store. At Jim's, they believe in turning houses into homes. Their windows don't just frame views, they frame memories. And their doors, well, they open endless possibilities. Whether you're upgrading for style, 10 seconds for security, the experts at Jim's can guide you every step of the way. Jim's Custom Custom doors and windows, 687-7071. You're on. Welcome to our second intermission. Ken Polichuk joins us as promised on behalf of the memorabilia committee. And, of course, uh, that beautiful showpiece that they have down the Whitney Forum lobby. And uh, the thing I like, it, it's like Christmas almost every day. You get to walk by that. There's always something new and exciting to enjoy. Uh, Ken joins us now. Ken, uh, we got that, of course, officially kicked off. I know it took a long wait time to get going, but you officially unveiled it in October. Uh, it looks fantastic. And, uh, I know we're going to talk about uh, these Hockey Hall of Fame plaques momentarily, but uh, all in all, it must be exciting for you to add new pieces all the time. And we should mention, not just a hockey showpiece, but a Flin Flon sports and a, and a Northern Manitoba showpiece. That's right. That's what it is. Uh, there's a lot of people that are in different Hall of Fames, like baseball and curling and canoeing, that uh, were never recognized around town. So I'm, I'm drawing out pictures of them, some of their trophies, and mounting them in so they get recognition, too, because they're people that have been for forgotten in the past. So uh, that's part of the part of the display, too. I love these Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame plaques because not only does it showcase some people that play in the NHL, but it showcases people that were really vital in, in, in Flin Flon hockey, uh, Billy Maluda being one of them. 
a builder for, for fantastic minor hockey programs throughout the years. Well, let's talk about the plaques. I know that was a really nice thing you've been working hard on. They're now uh, available in, in, the, uh, in the show piece. Of course, you can take a, a look at them. But uh, talk about those plaques. They, they look fantastic. And maybe how you got about getting all that done. Okay, Jordy Douglas, he's the president of the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame. When I approached him for some stuff from being an old bomber, he suggested this, that he would remake the plaques the same way as they were presented to the, to the people that got them. And uh, he charged us a bit for them, which was not a big deal. Uh, we start going through the list. I've got 21 hockey players and two hockey teams, the Flimflon Bombers and, of course, the Flimflon Warriors that uh, are inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, we're considering looking at it to, if it's a world record or not for, for 21 plaques to be issued to one town or one city and l less than 5,000 people. It's not, it's not like Winnipeg or anything. But it, and I went through the list, the list and I'd find these names again and people that are well known like George Allard, like he was a president of the league. He, he, he come out of Flim Flon, Bobby Kirk. Of course, Patty Ganell, you know, he, he was a, these were big guys. And I, and I found Sid Abel, was, was not in the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame, but he's in the Saskatchewan Holly, Hockey Hall of Fame. So I'm going to get his plaque also. And uh, when I'm looking up, studying these guys, it's amazing what they did. When some of them went like Bobby Clark in the NHL and Reggie Leach, my goodness, they were, they were keepers in those days. <laughs> And they came from Flint, Florida. You know, it's... Uh, well, like I said, it's great to showcase the guys from the NHL, but the other guys, like I said, a, a guy like Billy Maluda, he had a big influence on a lot of... Whether you went to the NHL, whether you went and played overseas, or, or whether you went to the mine after you're done playing hockey, he had a really big influence on a lot of minor hockey league players here. He sure did. He was, he was at the rink all the time. He was always involved in hockey, always involved on executive... The executives then were different. They were bigger. They were more business people and stuff like that. But he was always there, and he traveled with the team, and he, he scouted after he left here. He scouted uh, for, his, for his son, I think, in, in Rochester, in New York, where they went. And he, he was involved until the end, I think. He was as a scout, and, and uh, he, was, he was a keeper. Like We had lots of them in those days here. We certainly did, and, of course, those plaques are, are unveiled. You got a lot of new items, like we said, Ken. Every time you turn around, you got something new coming in. I know you got some really exciting uh, pieces here. You want to talk about? They're going to be added very, very soon. Yeah, like I've got a couple of guys from the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame: Lee Fisher, the pitcher, and Lenny Bolton. Uh, you know, I've, I've got cards and pictures in there to, to bring them up. Uh, Isabel Ketchin for curling. She won two in entries into the hockey or the curling Hall of Fame. Uh, there's Sid Abel, of course. Sid Abel and Bobby Clark are the only two from Flintlon that went into the Canadian Hockey Hall of Fame. Both of them were indicted as Hart Trophy winners, you know, which is, when I, was, when I see that, I said, holy smokes, did, were they really that good? But they were. It, it was, uh, it was it, it's been a real pleasure going through a lot of the history when I'm, I'm finding these names and get into the different history and the write-ups about him, Eric Nestorenko, there was a show. There was a story about him. It was unbelievable what kind of hockey legend he was in the NHL. In his whole life, he, he dedicated to hockey and helping hockey. And, and uh, who knew Eric Nestorenko? Like he, <laughs> he, uh, he, he was not. He, he never played hockey in the Bombers, but he was born in Flintlawn, and then he went out east. And that's where he played hockey, but he's still one of ours. <laughs> no, you're right, Ken. There's just so many great people. And you mentioned, of course, for the world of curling. You mentioned, of course, uh, the, the guys from baseball. And uh, it, it's incredible, the, the history. I mean, we've had, uh, like you said, a lot of great hockey players. But we've had provincial curling championship teams from here. We've had a, a lot of great athletes that have gone on and, and, and done a lot of great things. And it's great to, to show pieces. I know you're really enjoying putting this together. I am, yeah. And I've found some old trophies. That I've said I've salvaged from Hudson Bay, like one that was put out in 1935. There was a curling trophy that they played for till till the 1990s, till till uh, uh, the, our, our canoe paddlers. You know, all the all the guys in the Centennial Canoe Derby. They they got it into the inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame a few years ago. And uh, like I said, when we built this, it kind of involved into dedicating to a lot of the people that that 
in the in the, we're in our history that we don't uh, well we just forgot about them and uh, it's 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 been it's been a pleasure like uh, and guys like Stewie Lloyd have been a big help and what that's kind of why we put the thing together he's coming home in another week he'll be happy with what we've done so far so uh, it, it's coming together pretty good some lady gave us a whole set of pennants from the Western Hockey League when the Western, Cana- Western Canadian Hockey League was formed, the 12 teams that formed them. 67, I believe that was formed. Well, uh, in there, and then it, I, it started with 10, but I've got 12 because it's a little bit later. But the Bombers were in there, and funny, the Esteban Bruins are there, and they both went back to the to the SGHL. It was it, so it's kind of it's pretty neat. Some of the some of the stuff, and those teams are still all around. It's uh, no, I know it's a great part of the history. I know we talked about, we've done a few of these interviews now, Ken, but for anybody that didn't hear the other few, I was going to ask you to backtrack a little bit and why you kind of decided to put this all together and how it all kind of originally worked for you. I know we've talked about this before, but for somebody that didn't hear that interview, that maybe wants a little bit of, uh, uh, kind of wants to have the inclination how it all happened, tell me how you got involved and why you decided to do this. Okay, we got, it, we got involved in it with Stewie Lloyd, his wife, has said a lot of his stuff, like he's up in age just like we all are. A lot of his stuff, he's got a, a, an unbelievable collection of, of things that are unbelievable for, for hockey memorabilia. And she said, it, there's going to be a coming a time, this stuff is going to be with nobody around to look after it. So we, we thought we would build this. Some of the stuff will go into there. He, he didn't want it to go into the museum because it, it, it fits the Whitney Forum. So that's, that's how we got started. We went to the city. They agreed to build us this cabinet. Uh, we built it first class and deluxe. And many, many people have, have offered me things. Uh, Cal Hammond, I got his mask. And the mask is, he was on TV with it and everything and, and, and stuff like that. His, his wife gave it to me. Uh, there's other people that are offering things and offering things. Uh, one guy offered me, I don't know what we're going to do with it, one guy offered me a Bobby Orr game jersey that he won at a concert or something. And he said, can you use it? And I thought, well, you know, I don't know. So Rob says to me one day, yeah, we should put it on the wall. People will think that he played hockey in Flintlock. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I'm sure. Who, who doesn't recognize number four, right? That's right, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's, there's been ups and downs, but mostly it's, it's really it's a pleasure to do it. And I had a hockey player come in the other day, and he was kind of looking, so I, we took him through the whole thing. And this was a guy that played not junior hockey, but everything here. He played in the old-timers. And after, he just told me, he says, you know, I'm so pleased that this brings back good memories, a lot of the stuff that are in there. So uh, well, we want to get it. It's going to be ready and open for this weekend for the, for the when we start playing Friday night. And uh, that was the plan. And. It'll be a work in progress. You know, I've gone as far as we can go right now, but I'm sure it's going to change. It's going to be a, a changing thing. And uh, it's a great addition to the Whitney Forum. So. It certainly is. One last thing for you, Ken. If anybody, are you still looking for donations? Are you still looking for stuff? We're, if we're looking, we're look, if you want to give anything, because I've got probably six or seven portraits of different teams that we've never seen before given to me. The best thing, take them to the bomber office. Put them in an envelope, put your name and everything on the front. They'll get them to me. Uh, that's the best place. When they're open to their store on Main Street, just take it there, and and she'll get it to me somehow. That's, uh, that's, that's what people have been doing, and uh, that's probably the best way than trying to get a hold of me or anything. And like you said, it's just a really good way to preserve some great memories. Ken, great job. I look forward to always seeing how, like I said, I love those Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame plaques, and I look forward to seeing new items every time I walk by. So thanks for doing this, and uh, we look forward to seeing uh, how it continues to grow from here. That's right, Rob, and thank you very much for doing this for us because uh, it, I, I don't know if I, I – people say I talk too much, so maybe I <laughs> – you You've done a great job with this, uh, with, this, uh, with, this, yeah. with this display, and we certainly appreciate your time, Ken. So, again, thank you for all that you do. And thank you, Rob, for your, what you do too. And I think, I think you got some kind of award sometime for broadcasting, didn't you? Or maybe – well, we go a little bit over with the interview tonight. Austin, not the first time it's happened to me, and you know what? It won't be the last. The amazing Alexi Silvestri gets a loose buck. Here's the replay. It's off his skate. He's up the wing. 
beat the defense, but lies by the kick, nifty move, five hole on Cody Jamin. And Sylvester, the hottest bomber down the stretch, why not a big goal here? And Clint Fonov won 3 0, that's a four on four goal. And we talked about him earlier, he was almost breaking away in that first and second period, he just needed extra space. And right there, he finds the room, defensive falls over, nice goal for him, and well deserved. That comes just over a minute into the third period here. Noah Hole will get the assist. So at 109, Alexi Silvestri, if he gets it alone in a goalie, he's going to score. And he'll make it 3-0 here for Flint Flon Kittles. They're trying to come back. They need a goal, and they need it quickly if they're going to get back in this game here tonight. Here's Jacob Bockler to center. Shots are now 21-19. Tenors are here. The pass to Niven. Niven out front, and he had Bockler to the front of the net, and that one got redirected. Bockler wound up in the net, but he'll get out of there. But Flon will keep it in. Jacob Bockler again. There's a quick chance. Save made. Rebound in front of the Clipper net. Grabbed here by DeGraves on the penalty box. Anderson got it. Anderson cutting it a back catter turned away by Harmon Laser Hume. And now uh, Bax goes flying in the net. He might be shaken up there. But a lot happening in the first minute or so here in this third period. Perfect way to start off the third. A goal, some good opportunities from the Bombers. And then right back at him, the Clippers almost have a breakaway there. But great defense there by the Bombers. And then Anthony Bax goes flying like a helicopter right into the net. Not too sure. Looks like he just lost his footing when crashing into the post. But very exciting stuff here to start off this third period. McDonald's out of town scoreboard. We'll get to that next break. A big face off to the right of the Bomber net monitor, Harmon Laser Hume. As it looks like uh, Olison's going to take the face off here against Taylor of the Clippers. He's had a nice game tonight. Bombers win the draw. This is Egan. He'll lift it up the middle. Trader got a piece that couldn't knock it down cleanly. Puck picked up here by Diaz. Diaz over to Taylor. His back counter knocked away by Niven. Niven a good game here tonight. We'll drop it back to Olison. They're going to count on a lot of Niven's experience. Of course, uh, again, a good chunk of his career, career spent in the Western Hockey League, but he's played a lot of games in a lot of different places. Look out. The Clippers bump into each other. They caught the puck up. Stole by Joey Lee. So had a free lane in the net. He just got a whiff on the shot. Here comes uh, Perlinger the other way. He'll dump it in, knocked away in the corner this time by McNutt. McNutt gets a hold of it. He'll flip it ahead. Matt Egan grabs it at center. Matt Egan across the line will dump it back in. Jamin out of his own net. Clippers move it ahead. Here's the quick pass to Perliger down the wing. Perliger going wide here on Leffer. Perliger will carry it in. Perliger tried to wrap around and they got blocked at the last second. Joey Lees has got it for Flint Fawn. Again, he'll push it ahead. They're going to try to get a stick on that. They're going to say hit it with a high stick and they'll blow it down with 16.46 to go in the third period. Uh, Estevan Melford all even at one. That's after one. Humboldt a 2 nothing lead on the wings after one period of play. No score, Melville Battleford after one. Manitoba Junior Hockey League playoffs tonight. The Dauphin Kings continue to lead the Blizzard 2-1 late in the third period. Steinbeck a 4-2 lead on Neverville in the third. After two, Burton leads Sipua 4-1 and wins their 4-1 lead on Portage in the third period tonight. 3-0, Flint Vaughn in front here as Diaz, the high-flying D-man for the Clippers, has it. To Perlinger, across the line, a shot! Got block, rebound, kicked out front, and Laser Hilma grabbed that. Perlinger goes in against Laser Hilma, a bit of a shot here. And that's going to get some tempers going as well. I'm not sure if you heard the announcement at the end of the second period, but Brock Miller took a 10-minute misconduct, so yes. they're going to be without him for a few minutes. Yeah, I was going to mention that to you. I saw that here as well, and wow, pretty crazy. Brock Miller, 10 minutes out of the game, and... He's a big player for them out there, not only on the offensive, but a very physical guy. He knows the Bombers. He knows a little bit how they that well. Exactly. He knows how they play. He's a very fast skater for his size, so definitely going to notice him not out there. So they won't have him, so they don't hear Mueller's name for a few minutes. You'll know why. He took a 10-minute misconduct at the end of the second period. 16.25 to go third period. There's Linklater again. I want you to keep track of Linklater's uh, ice time the next game. He doesn't leave the ice. Yeah, well, they need him out there, that's for sure. He'll take the draw again. The puck will come back to Diaz. He'll throw it in. Linklater had to hop over a stick. He gets it right back. Grabbed in the corner here by Perlinger. Back to Diaz. He's got it. Shot. Wide. Lots of traffic in front. They try to jam it in. Puck grabbed here by Semp, and he'll clear it out. And Diaz back to get it at the Clipper blue line. Feeds that back to DeGraves. DeGraves to center. Dumps it inside the Flint Flon zone. Township trying to get a stick on it. DeGraves will tie up with him in the corner. Puck laying there. Picked up here by Linklater. Shovels it in. 
leaves it there. Hilbig throws it back out front. Diaz couldn't pick it up. This is Semp for Flynn Flynn. He'll try to get in, hit the line so with the puck, and the Graves gets it back. The Graves has it for Kindersley. Up the wall that time for Hilbig too far. Leper will grab it back of the bomber net. Swings it ahead to Anderson, his backhander. Back to center. Hilbig knocks it down. He'll fire it right back in. Poole can't knock it down, but Anderson does. Anderson picks it up for Flint Vaughn at center. Tried to spread that over to Piccinino. Had a good chance. Uh, actually, before the Bombers scored, he had a great opportunity as well just before that. As he's able to get the puck back to that, Guac worked it out front for a good backhander, but Jamin turned it away. Jamin's got it now. Back of the goal, stolen here by Anderson. Back up on Lee, they score! Justin Lee! Off the crossbar and in! On a tremendous pass by Carter Anderson! And this team has got their mojo back! They take a 4 nothing lead! What a shot by the Bomber captain! And the perfect set of two, Raw. We talked about Jamin maybe coming out of his net too much there. Well, he does. Pressure to make the pass, turns it over, goes right to Carter Anderson behind the net. Carter Anderson sends it in front. Justin Lee's right in the slot. Rips it, goes bar down, and what a goal to put the Bombers up 4 nothing. So the Bombers get a couple big goals here early. That's going to come at the 5-0-3 mark. And the Bomber captain, Justin Lee, is a big one for him tonight. First ever playoff goal for him in his uh, SJHL career. Again, the guy that played a ton of the Western Hockey League, so I'm sure it's a, a goal that he'll never forget. Here comes Olison back the other way. Nibben's got it. Lepper to the front of that. Nibben hangs on, shoots! And he ripped that one wide. Lepper's been really pitching up in the play nice tonight. Remember that one penalty kill he had a good chance? Olison trying to dig it free. Grabbed by Taylor. To the blue line. Knocked down by Hull. He'll hold it in. Here's Noah Hull, the SJHL defenseman of the air. Big body check there, stepping into Schrader. Puck comes free. Niven's got it, tries to come out front. Leper can't get a stick on it. Knocked down here by uh, the Clippers and sent back to the Bombers line. Poole. Got it back to Egan. Look out, have a little trouble handling it. Better be careful. He had uh, Van and Elson come in on him. Before so nothing, the Bomber capped at a big goal here tonight. This is Joey Lees to center. He'll slap it back in the Clippers zone. Jamin out of the net yet again. Around the boards. Puck hits a skate. Comes back to Perlinger at center. He'll backhand her back at football territory. In behind the play, something going on here. Joey Lees took a big hit. He lost his stick, and it looks like he's favoring his left shoulder there. Did you see it? No, I saw the hit down here right at the center line, but I didn't see what happened there with he's Joey. He's hurt. He got hit him behind the play. His stick is still on the ice. Play continues here. Lees has made his way off the ice. Yeah, he's really favoring that shoulder. That does not look good. Kashuk will touch up. An icing call against uh, Kindersley. 13-24 to play. And the official on the goal. Lees from Anderson and Piccinino. 4 nothing flip fun. Hopefully Joey Lees is okay, but he looks like in a world of discomfort there on the bomber bench. So that's great goal here early period. Off the faceoff. Just fired wide that time by Vockler. Danchuk will hold it in. Perlinger after it. He'll pick it up. Perlinger trying to get across the bomber line. Bax is there to take care of him. He lost the handle. Puck rolled inside the bomber net, but Lazy Hill couldn't grab it. Bax knocked down, but he'll get right back up. His pass, a good one to Tanchuk to center. He'll rip it right back in. There's Semp after it. Lost the handle. Clippers carry it out. Comes back to Bax. He'll rip it back in. Hill big waited for it. Off the skate. Silvestri looking to get the steal. Alexi Silvestri knocked it away on target. Jamin the save. Piccinino and Walker both racing towards the front of that. So Flint Juan looking like that team of old, aggressive, throwing a lot of stuff to the front end, skating well, knocking down a lot of errant passes. And uh, tremendous start for the Bombers. Two quick goals here to kick off the third period. Yeah, the Bombers just taking big advantage of the mistakes by the Clippers. Mistakes that you definitely didn't see in the first and second period. You can kind of see now that the scoreboard definitely getting to the Clippers a bit and them being down. They're trying to rush stuff. They're trying to force stuff, do stuff that they weren't doing in those first two periods. And now they're making mistakes in the Bombers, just taking an advantage off those mistakes. Face off back inside the Clippers' old Hillbank. Off the glass. That's not there to break that one up. Hit Evans, but they're offside, and they'll blow it down with 12.40 to go. In this third period, uh, try a realty shot clock. Look out. Close off to 24-22. Kennedy's 
Well, they did a pretty good job keeping the Bombers at bay with the shots. Yeah, did a great job, especially in those first two periods. Even when the Bombers lose, they usually outshoot the opposition. No, I was going to say, in the first two periods, that was probably the lowest shots the Bombers had. I would say pretty close to in a game all season. When Vaughn wins this face off, this is uh, McNutt to center. McNutt throws it back across the line. Schrader has got it around the boards. Pacino there to knock it away. Lost the puck in the corner. Link later. Back to Hill Big too far. Going to roll inside the Flint Swan zone. Wide of the mark. McNutt will touch up. And we'll get another face off back inside the Clifford line. Let's see what's happening here with the uh, McDonald's out of town scoreboard. The Humboldt Broncos, a 2 nothing lead on Weyburn. They're just in the second period. Still no goals. Melville Battleford. Expect that to be a real stingy series. That's the way Melville's got to play it. And Esteban Melford, 1-1, one, one, late in the second period. All close games in that Melville Battleford game. Definitely going to come down to the wire. Face off inside the Clippers zone. They got some work to do at least tonight. They're down 4, 12, 18 remaining in the third period. Puck lifted down the ice in Flintwan territory. Another icing call against the Clippers. Leffer will touch up. And Kindersley can't get that late change that they're hoping. Tanner trying to get off here. And I don't know how he's going to do this when they just ice the puck. Referee on top of it here. And he's going to have to go back out there. So 12-12 remaining in the third period. Face off back at the Clippers zone on the right of Cody Jamin. Bolas going to take the face off against Guess Who Link later back out there again. Off the draw. Puck comes to left with the blue line. Can't hold it in. Throws it back in. Demo's got it. Up the middle to Link later. Link later looking for some room. Taking off his stick. This is Devin for Flint One. Up the board this time for Egan. He'll chip it into Olison. Trying to see if I can see Joey Lees on the bench there. Like we said, left the ice in all kinds of discomfort. I hope he's all right. We'll see if uh, he gets back out there tonight. Clippers have the puck. They'll swing it back to center, grabbed by the forward uh, Van and Elson and throws it in, but one point right back out, left to center. Throws it back out front, Taylor with the interception. Taylor's got it. Back to Ostrom at center. Ostrom sends it inside the flint Swan zone. Tanchuk back in the net, has Ostrom on top of him. Looking for the turnover. Tanchuk trying to pin up along the boards. Clippers have it shot off the side of the net that time by uh, Van Den Elzen. To the blue line to Hilbeck. He'll knock it down. He'll throw it back in deep. Puck came out front. Laser Hume's got it. And he'll hang on. And again, if you're wondering where Brock Miller is, 10 minute misconduct he got at the end of the second period. Do you see Joey Lee's on the bench there anywhere? No, I think he, he left. I don't see uh, J Rock out there either. So I think they went. Well, uh, we would have noticed if he skated across the ice. Would we have not? I'm th- do you think, I don't know. He went, they wouldn't have gone up to the stairs, would they? If it was the, no, uh, no, he skated across. I think he's sitting on the bench there. I t- could, yeah, he's sitting there with the full. I think that's him. We'll see. Puck clear to the blue line. I would have noticed that he skated off the ice. I'm pretty sure, but maybe I missed it. Who knows? Backs inside the Flint Swan zone. Got away from him. Intercepted. Hey, that's a chance. Good save there. Harmon Laser Hume. One of the best chances for the Clippers here in the third period. Danchuk poked it ahead. Piccinino. The quick pass here to Gilbert. Gilbert and Piccinino take off. Gilbert down the lane. Hangs on a shot. It's over top of the Clipper net. Piccinino will knock it down. Helmet comes off of uh, Jamin here. That play is blown down. 10.36 to go. Very quick game here tonight. And a 4 nothing Flint Swan lead game one of the SJHL quarterfinal. Great turnout tonight, and we get to do it all again right back here tomorrow. Oh, it's going to be exciting. And you know what, Rob? We talk about the 10-minute misconduct for Brock Mueller. And look at what the Bombers have been able to do without Brock Mueller out on the ice. Like we said, not a big goal-scoring guy, but definitely just a physicality in the defense. Clippers definitely missing that right now. There's a chance by Chow. That one got partially blocked. Bockler, Semp, and Silvestri go to work. Both Bockler and Silvestri have scored tonight. Held in by McDutt. Puck picked up here by Silvestri. Beautiful goal to start the parade. Back up front. Set the chance. Gave it to not a rebound. They can't jam it in. Puts one holds it in. Silvestri rips it over top of the net. Good pressure here again. Set a glorious opportunity. Trying to get it back out front. He'll knock it down. Good work here by Cohen Semp. He hangs on to it. Drops it along the board. Bocker back out front. Semp off his skate. Tries to keep it in, but puck knocked away by Diaz. He'll find Hilbig on the left side. He's across the bomber line. Puck hits that skate and 
Bombers try to throw it back. It hits uh, Linklater going off for a change. And they'll blow it down. 9.45 to go. Shots now at Flintflon's favor for the first time in the Tri Realty shot clock. 26 24 Flintflon. So, so far in this third period, the Bombers have uh, nine compared to the Clippers five. Media timeout. We take a break. Bombers in front by four here on 1029 CFAR and FlintflonOnline.com. There's no clear, like, new familiar. You know, like a lost track from your favorite old band. Fresh, but well acquainted. Just like the North of 53 Co-op. Staple and gourmet items you know and love. Friendly staff who will treat you right. And the Co-op always has new items or something you may have missed that's new to you. You can get a tin of beans and milk anywhere, but you can't find the feeling of new familiarity just anywhere. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Hud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, Hud Bay has supported our community with dedication and generosity, contributing to events and organizing. Ten seconds. Hud Bay thanks the people of Flint Flon for their continued support. You're on. And welcome back to the uh, Whitney Foreman. appears that Joey Lees has left the game and hoping that uh, he's okay, but... Uh, didn't see, you didn't see what happened to them behind the play there, eh? No, I didn't. There, because there was, I heard a big hit down here right under, so I looked that down there. That wasn't the hit, I don't think. I think his was back inside. Oh, yeah, and then his was back there, so I missed it. But, yeah, I wonder what happened. I wish we could have seen the replay. Well, hopefully he's okay, but looks like he has left the game here for tonight. The Bombers a 4 nothing lead. 9.42 to go as the Bombers hammer. And here's a chance in front. Bouncing puck, and it gets away from Pichonito. Back pulls it in. Back out front to Pichonito again. Broke it up that time by Anderson of the Clippers, but swatted away. Piccinino will come flying down here on the Clipper defense, but Schrader drilled him back to the net as the fans cheer. Bombers get the turnover. Backs the blue line. Here's Tanchuk. Throws it back in tight. Boy, the Bombers like a great white shark uh, circling inside. Seal-infested waters now. They're really pouring it on. Piccinino back out front. There's a chance by Justin Lees, and Jamin gets the blocker on that. A good save. Great pressure here by the Bombers as they're pouring it on with a 4 0 lead and nine minutes to play in the third period. Brock Mueller finally back in the game. He gets knocked down. Here's Devin. Across the line, a shot. Oh, the line. He gets fired it wide. Great chance there for the lunch pail gang. And here comes English the other way. He'll send it back inside. Flint Flon territory. There's Bax. Bax will knock it down. He's looked good tonight. Bax on the fly. The center. Lost the handle. Mack got it, but turned it right back over before Perliger comes over and throws it back in the Bombers' zone. Matt Egan's got it. Here comes Matt Egan. He'll throw it in. Smith there to get that. 8.25 to go. 4 nothing Flint Flon. Niven. What a game Niven's had tonight. He'll keep the puck in. Knocked away. Set back down the ice. And I think up in the Bomber bench and blown down. And we got two guys coming over here. Is that Aiden Chow they're going after? I think it is. That looks like Aiden Chow. Perlinger and uh, and Alex Mack, the two players racing after Chow. Perlinger's got a hold of him. 8.16 to go. 28-24 in the Bombers' favor on the Trad Realty shot clock. Boy, game really intensifying here, Austin, in the third period. Absolutely. What a turnaround for the Bombers. And you know what? That 10-minute misconduct by Brock Mueller really made a difference. Bombers come out. Huge Boy, opportunities. Every time Perlinger, not to cut you off, Austin, every time Perlinger's been out there tonight, he's been at that bomber bench. He's still uh, upset about something. Yeah, well, it just goes to show the Tinners and Clippers letting the Bombers get under the skin and making the mistakes that they didn't make in those first two periods now. Face off at the Clippers zone to the left of the goaltender, Cody Jamin. Bruner for Flint Fon to line up against the Tinners League captain, Logan Linklater. We'll probably going to lose 10 or 15 pounds with the amount of ice time that he's been able to uh, take. A lot of big face-offs and certainly one of their top players here. Look out and behind the play. We've got Hilbig losing a helmet here. He's got to pick it up and get off the ice. Something happened behind the play there that he's not happy about. Meanwhile, play continues up the ice inside football territory. Leper gets knocked to the ice. Diaz will hold it in. Diaz rips it on target. Good save, Laser Hughes. And the save is made with 7.51 to go. And a lot, we didn't see a lot of hitting in the first two periods. 
They're more than making up for that here in the third tonight. Oh, yeah, the intensity and the emotions are starting to fly high. Hilbig not too happy with losing the helmet back there behind Jamin. And then a nice shot there by Diaz right from the blue line through traffic. But Harmon Laser Hume been a man on a mission, proving why he deserves that SJHL goalie of the year. 50-50, $21,355. I got I bought a 50-50 ticket. I'm happy with it. The draw hopefully coming up soon. But wow, that's what a way to start to start the playoffs here tonight. Clippers looking to get back on the board. Back out front for the blue line. A shot over top of the net that time. Clippers had a chance to jam it in, but it's wide. Good opportunity for the blue line that time for uh, Schrader. Henderson will keep it in deep. There's Silvestri back in his own net. Up the board here to Cohen Stemp. A couple good chances for him tonight. His back end is set back to center. Grabbed by Silvestri. Across the line. He'll keep it in. For Jacob Vaca, who started things off with a goal late in the opening period. Or early in the opening period, pardon me. Set to the front that tried to jam it in. He gets taken down. Hool will pinch in. Noah Hool's got it. Back of the goal. Noah Hool hanging on. Pants out front. Vaker won't shoot it. Vaker back of the goal. Linklater took it from him. Here's Linklater. Good work to get it out. He and Vaker tie up. Vaker stick it sucked out of his hands. Picked up by Evans. Fired on target. Both teams changing. Noah Hool to center. Off the boards, back at Clipper territory, knocked away by Hillbig. Hillbig taken down here by Hull. That's a slow shot, no doubt yeah, about that one. I saw that was pretty obvious. I don't think he was getting away with that one. No, definite penalty there. He kicked the leg out and took Hillbig down. So Kindersley, if nothing else, well, you still got some time lost. It was 6.45 to go, but if nothing else, you want to try and grab whatever momentum you can for the second game here tomorrow, right? Oh, absolutely, and that's what the Clippers need to try and do, or the Bombers, both teams. You know what? Clippers, they had the momentum and really lost it here in this third period, so now hopefully trying to do anything they can to try and get it back. Even a goal, even if you lose, 4 one's a whole lot better than 4 nothing. Well, I mean, you still got seven minutes to go. So lost the know. time, exactly. Double minor, two up on the board here. Wow. So you a know, great chance here for Kindersley. They've called the timeout. We'll do the same. Game on the line for them. They get a double minor when we return. They're down by four here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintPawnOnline.com. RAG 19 Limited in the Paw now have Ultra Quiet 15. Any purpose, the Ultra Quiet 1000i is one of the quietest gas power generators. 22 seconds now. 1000 watts of power. The 3000. 29 seconds. Honda Eco Throttle System, offering amazing fuel efficiency, lasting 7 to 20 hours on a Get single tank. From recreation to industrial, get your hands on a Canadian built and tested Honda generator at RAG 1987 Limited in the Paw, your local Honda dealer. It feels great shopping for Maytag at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Everywhere you look, there's Maytag appliances that you can picture being in your own home because you know they have what you're looking for and will make sure you're happy. It's so reassuring that Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center delivers right to your door and will service your major appliances too. When your appliances need 10 seconds, updating, do what feels great. Shop Maytag at Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center, 306-688-75. Eight, seven. You're on. So Noah Hull gets a double minor here for Trepic. Here's a steal by Alexi Silvestri. Silvestri, who's had a fantastic game, has a goal and an assist here tonight. Got it in deep before Diaz came back. Dropped it back to Linklater. Linklater to center. Here's Linklater across the bomber line. Dropped it back to Hill Big. He'll fire it in. Picked up by Jacob Walker. Gets a hold of it. Down the ice it goes. And regular season for the Kennedy Clippers so on the power play. They were led by uh, Hillbig and his 16 power play goals. So Tylen Hillbig, the hot hand for Kindersley with the power play in the regular season, leading his way with 16 power play goals. It's amongst the league leaders. There's a chance there for Mack as he'll send it over top of the net. Puck uh, back in the glove of Lisa Hughes. He'll make the save and hang on. 3.13 to go the double minor. 5.58 remaining in the third period. A 4-0 Clinton lead Kindersley. 0 for 4 on the power play tonight, and that might be the uh, determining factor for them to get one of those goals early. Who knows, right? Uh, so, well, you get one of those early, and you know what? It's just a momentum thing, too, right? When you get stumped four or five times in a row on that power play, it's very defe defeating. But they got some time now to make something happen. Back out to the blue line to Inglis. Gets it in tight. Inglis again. Blue line for DeGraves. Left side of the ice. Back of the goal that goes to Mueller. Back out front. Here's a chance. They can't jam it in. 
knocked down in front of the net that time was uh, Zachary Anderson. But Bono get a hold of it. They'll lift it down the ice. Save made by Jamin. And he'll drop it back to the goal for DeGraves. 2.44 to go the double minor. DeGraves will carry it to his blue line. Dishes it off here to Inglis. Dropped it back to Taylor. Sends it in. Chow tried to get a stick on it. Good work by Olison along the blue line. Chow can't get a hold of it either. Clippers keep it in. Buck shoveled back to the net. Picked up there by Lepper. Pinned up along the boards by Brock Mueller in English. Mueller tough to take that puck away from along the wall. Has a hold of his guy. Puck lifted the right point. Knocked down by DeGraves. He'll hold it in. This is DeGraves. Through traffic, a shot. Save made. Rebound in front. Mueller trying to jam it in. He's taken down here. As he and Chow will tie up. 2.08 remaining in the double minor. 4.53 in the third period. Good penalty killing again here by the Bombers. And got to give credit to Harmon Laser Hume. He's been unreal today, even right there. A very, very tough save for him as he's trying to see through all this traffic. You can see him peeking left. Shot goes right, still able to react just in time to grab that one up before they get it on the rebound. 4.53 to go. Big face off again in the flip zone to the right of the net minor. Harmon Laser Hume, the Clippers have uh, retaken the Trad Realty shot clock at 30 to 28. Well, they're getting some chances, but maybe not a lot of uh, good chances in tight. Mac off the face. Oh, hey, God, shoots it. That got blocked. Linklater knocked it down. Back to Diaz. Back to Linklater along the boards. He'll hang on to it. Back to Diaz. Right circle. He'll make Fadden on it. Throws it back out front. Swatted away that time by Tanchuk. 145 to go the double minor, four and a half to go in the third period. Here comes Diaz. Up the center, back around the boards, inside football territory. Chow in there again, trying to get a stick on it. Bombers work it free. Kylan Olison hits back pattern, set down the ice. A minute 25 to go in the power play. Kidders, they really looking a little confused in the power play. They had a real tough time setting up, and they'll start off from square one again in their own zone. The Graves. Shovels that pass over to Anderson. He'll dump it in. Leper back of the bomber net. Shops that one over to uh, Carter. Anderson can't clear. The Graves holds it in. Throws it through traffic. Bueller in front again. Brock Bueller seems to be the go-to guy here on the power play. There he is in front of the net again. Clippers have it back of the goal. Centers out front. English's chance. He dropped it off at the last second. Spinning and firing that time was Taylor. Taylor gets it back. Shoots it again off the glove that time of Harmon Laser Hill. 47 seconds to go. In the Clipper power play. Puck picked up by Taylor. Throws it back up front. Anderson, a shot. Ripped it over top of the bomber net. Picked up here by Carter Anderson. And he's got it for football, and he'll shovel it down the ice with 33 seconds to go in the Kittersley power play. 3.13 remaining in the third period. 4 nothing. Flintflon in front. Clippers have it. This is Schrader to center. Drop that one back. Puck picked up here by Diaz. Or Demo, rather. He'll carry it in. Shovel it back around the boards. Grabbed by Silvestri. Puck flipped back inside the Clippers zone. There's three seconds remaining in the power play. Schrader's got it. Going to have to move quickly. Puts the pass to Demo. He'll dump it in. Kindersley 0 for 5 with the power play tonight. They get the puck in deep again. No, that's grabbed here by Silvestri. Down the ice. Here comes uh, Semp racing after it. Pinned up with uh, Schrader along the boards. Silvestri follows in, dropped it back. Can't put back, a chance, and a shot on target. Save made, Cody Jamin, 2.24 to go. And it looks like, unless there's a real colossal breakdown, Flint Farm looks like they're going to take game one. Yeah, and you know what? The Clippers really hung in there for a good part of the game. They're neck and neck leading in the shots. And then this third period, the Bombers just able to find the fire, get the crowd behind them, and an absolute tear here, scoring some goals and able to go for nothing. So 1,156 is the announced attendance here tonight. And I'm assuming most will probably go home pretty happy with the 4 nothing lead here right now with 2.13 to go. Clippers will get the puck back inside the foot and zone here. Just checking, everybody's checking the even... Uh, well, the Clipper players up in the booth have bought 50-50s. How can with a chance to take home 10000 bucks tonight? Puck lifted out. He'll make grab that at his own blue line. Check that ticket over. I'll give you a couple hundred bucks if I win. You can go down and get it. Smith back of the net. Knocked off the play. Stolen here by Gruner. Back out front to Egan. Comes back to the blue line. 
Leper knocked it down to Chaz. Back got blocked. Leper got it back. Fan on it. Hangs on to it. Has it back to the goal. Here's Luke Leper looking to do some damage. Leper loses some equipment here. Has it along the boards. Good move here by Leper. Finally knocked to the ice this time by Linklater. And they'll flip it back inside the Flint Juan zone. Save made by Laser Hume. Up the ice it goes to Noah Hole. Pull back across the Clipper line. Noah Hole throws it in back of the goal for Olison. Rims it around the board. Right point. Backs waits for it. Got to come back out front. Knocked down here by Perlinger. Perlinger to Perlinger, but broken up by Hool at center. Now we got another bomber hurt. Niven is down here. And he's cut. I wonder if this is going to be a penalty here against Kindersley. You see what happened there, Austin? Yeah, just slamming the boards there with number 17 and just kind of took an awkward hit. He did. He's got the towel out right away. And hopefully Niven's okay. How's my 50-50 ticket look? You got the four. Nothing else after. Not even two numbers, Rob. Sorry to break it to you. Big shocker. I know. <laughs> you want to take a look. I can't even see these numbers. Thank goodness they're up there. No, it's... You're uh, sure I didn't win, right? Oh, Rob, I'm sure. Trust me. I, I scanned it about ten times. Yeah, it's, that's the worst. Yeah, I don't mind. You get one or two. It's okay. Don't even get the second number. That one hurts a little bit. Oh, well. Only one person can win, I suppose. Uh, there's always tomorrow. Exactly. Niven going to leave the ice here. He got cut. I'm not sure if it was a stick or a puck or something hit him, but... He should be back, I'm assuming, in uniform tomorrow night. Now, he played a heck of a game tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gruner to take the face off against Taylor outside the Clipper Blue Line. 105 remaining in the third period. A 4 0 Flint Flon lead. Clippers again winning the shot count. 31 29 on the Tri Realty Shock Rock. But the Bonners, after a tough first period here tonight, come back with a pretty decent second and a really good third period. As they have the puck inside their own zone, trying to. Finish up a strong game here. Here's Kyle and Olison. Shoveled it back of the goal for backs. On the boards it goes. Held in here by Demo. Post from along the boards. Throws it in the corner. Clippers try to work it back out front. Looking to get a goal here to get some momentum here for tomorrow night. Back of the net. That's uh, Vanden Elzen. Loses the handle. Cohen Semp has it. Back to Olison. Olison dropped it back to Semp. He'll hang on a shot. And Jamin got a piece of that. Clippers get the rebound. Center ice. Demo will get it. He'll dump it in. 14 seconds remaining against the Whitney Park faithful. Looks around the last couple of moments. Here's McBath to center. Let's a rip. Hold on. Oh, my luck. Six sides. Herminger will grab it. And that's going to do it tonight. I'll tell you right now, I think there's more people in here than that. This is 1,156. Wow. Boy, they're all standing, cheering a big victory here for the Bombers tonight. Who, despite getting out shot, win the game 4 nothing and a couple of big goals early in the third period. The catalyst for this one here tonight. Oh, absolutely. You know what? The big goals and the ability to kill the penalties today. That was the real big difference maker. Did a great job killing the penalties, and then those huge goals in the third period is really what did it for the Bombers today. No question about it, especially keep the big part of the game. Flint Fun goes one for two on the power play. Kindersley 0 for 5, including that four minute minor. That's uh, happened here midway through the third period. We'll take a break. We've got lots to get to here tonight. Well, the Bombers win the uh, first big game. They win it 4 to nothing. And nice to see some of the old uh, familiar faces getting back in on the offensive side of things. Lots to get to. We'll take a break. It's all coming up for the Whitney Forum here on 1029 CFAR and clickbononline.com. When you open a bubbly clear water, you're not just opening a refreshing drink, you're opening a world of possibility. Twelve. Nice Hawaiian vacation. Okay. Or an amazing African safari. Or even a not so fun trip to the Amazon. 
When you have a bubbly, sparkling water, you can go anywhere and do anything. So crack a smile. Arctic beverages and bubbly, sparkling water. There's nothing quite like new familiarity. You know, like a lost track from your favorite old band. Fresh, but well acquainted. Just like the North of 53 Co-op. Staple and gourmet items you know and love. Friendly staff who will treat you right. And the co-op always has new items or something you may have missed that's new to you. You can get a tin of beans and milk anywhere, but you can't find the feeling of new familiarity just anywhere. The North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Ud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. Through bursaries, donations for hockey schools and clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, Ud Bay has supported the Funfon community with their dedication and generosity for decades and continues to be a major donator to charities, events, and organizations. Ud Bay thanks the people of Funfon and the surrounding communities for their continued support. Everything is possible with the help of Shane's. Getting the band back together with all new guitars, amps, and drums. Entertaining the kids with board games, Lego, or the new Nintendo game. Focusing on yourself with a relaxing massager, oils, pillows, and candles. Or working from anywhere with a quality laptop, tablet, and printer. Chains has the products made for you. Whatever your needs are. Anything from common items like chargers and cables. Ten seconds. Unique like crystals or prepaid phones. Trust them with the products that matter to you. Chains in the Atinike Mall. Watch. Listen, play, connect. You're on. And welcome back to Whitney Forum. The Flint Flon Bombers picking up the 4 nothing victory. Take a one game to none lead here in the SJHL quarterfinal. And uh, I guess, you know, you want to take about, talk about men of a lot of things with the Bombers way tonight. Uh, Austin, we kind of touched on it as we're closing down the broadcast. Night. Obviously, special teams a big part of the game. The penalty kill was great. Uh, stopped all five Kindersley power plays. We're one for two on the power play. But timely goals. I mean, the goal, by, it wasn't a particularly... Great opening period for Flint Flon tonight. Kindersley came out and really kept Flint Flon at bay. Held the Bombers to just seven shots in the first period, but that early goal by uh, Jacob Walker at the Bombers had all the momentum in this game. They got the early goal, they had the penalty kill going, they got some good saves from Harmon Lee's and whom when they needed them. But uh, for Kindersley, again, I did some things well, uh, a great four check, but uh, to me, the two things for them. They missed power plays, but they also had a couple of good chances, five on five early when football was in quicksand in their own zone and couldn't convert, couldn't get the goal tonight when they needed one. Absolutely. You know what? Like you mentioned, they had those great opportunities wide open in the middle of the ice, high slot area, openings when the Bombers turned it over, missed those shots. And then, like you mentioned, the, the penalty kill is, uh, the, sorry, the power play is where they really struggled. Bombers, unreal on the penalty kill. And the Bombers, it was the timing of their goals. Like you said, the momentum they were able to get. That early on goal in the game really gave them some momentum. And then you go to the second period, Jacob Wachler, uh, sorry, not Jacob Wachler, uh, Carter Anderson gets that goal later on in the second. Huge momentum swing going to the end of the period. Then you go into the third. First 10 minutes, that's where the Bombers get a, 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 some of their goals. Really take the momentum early on in the period. And that's basically was what helped them out a lot. Obviously, Harmon Laser Hume, I don't think we talked about him enough tonight. 31 for 31 on the saves. Uh, you know what? He didn't make any amazing saves, but when you do a great job... I had a couple early I thought were pretty good. Exactly. But when you're a great goalie, you do a great job, you make every save look easy. So Harmon Laser Hume also really helped out his team tonight. Bombers, like you said, I think all around pretty solid game for them. A, a little shaky maybe there in the end of the first, beginning of the second, where the Clippers had lost momentum, were playing really hard, great on the four check, made the Bombers make some mistakes, but I think the Bombers were able to capitalize on the mistakes that the Clippers made. Clippers weren't able to capitalize on the Bombers' mistakes. And Let's I think recap the, uh, the, the scoring summary here tonight. Again, the game winner, Jacob Walker's first to playoff from Alexi Silvestri, uh, 2.59 into the opening period. Who would have thought at that point that that would hang on as the game winner? It did. They get one goal by Carter Anderson, the five-on-three power play goal in the second. That uh, was assisted by Justin Lee, so, so a late goal for them in the second period. But a couple of quick goals in the third. Alexi Silvestri, what a what a year he had. What a second half of the season had. He scores his first from Hool and Piccinino, 109 in. Then Justin Lee is the recipient of a beautiful Carter Anderson pass back in the net. His first to playoffs as well. So like I said... All the big gunners score in the night. Bockler, Anderson, Silvestri, Lees. Shots in the third period, 13-10. Flint Flon, Kindersley still out, shoots some total 31-30. But again, 0 for 5 on that power play for Kindersley. There's some opportunities that pass them by. 
Clint Vaughn just one chance really on the five on three. They go one for two and uh, stands up as a pretty big uh, game winning goal. So uh, again, full marks to Clint Vaughn. A great start to the playoffs. We weren't sure what to expect. The team did stumble down the way, but like we said, so many weapons, so many uh, things in their arsenal. And, you know, uh, anytime your best players are your best players, chances are they're going to have a pretty good chance to win the game. And uh, I think that's a factor here tonight, too. I mean, not to take anything away from uh, Logan Linklater or, you know, uh, or, or the, the Hill Bigs or, or DeGraves, uh, some of their better players. No point production from them. The Bombers get point production from their better players and another factor in them pulling out the 4 nothing victory here tonight. Yeah, well, like, like you said, you put it perfectly, Rob. You know what? Those four guys have been the Bombers. A majority of their offense for a good part of the year. Don't get me wrong. Bombers have some great depth there with some depth scoring. But, you know, when those guys play well for the Bombers, Silvestri, Vockler, Lees, and Anderson, they always are going to have a good game. And then, of course, Lazy Hume on top of on top of that. When you have your top four players, your, your number one goalie playing, their hearts out playing great games, it's going to be successful, I think. Yet again, that's where the Clippers kind of failed tonight was they didn't have their big stars kind of, you know, get the production they wanted. They got good opportunities. They got some good looks or great on the defense. But when it came to the offensive, they just couldn't get it done when they had to. The good news for Kinder is they got another game right back here tomorrow. And I'm sure if they could win tomorrow night and take one out of two from Cliff one, they'd be ecstatic and uh, put this game out of the memory bank. We'll take a break. We've got lots of post-game show awards to get to tonight. We'll get to those. A lot more than just three stars. A lot of stuff's been added here for the playoffs. So, a lot still to come from the Whitney Foreman. Of course, uh, the victorious head coach, Mike Reagan, as well. His comments coming up on the Great North Post game report. But a big win for Flynn Fawn. 4 nothing the final here at the Forum in front of, well, I'm thinking well over 1,300 people here on 102.9 CFAR and Flynn Fawn online.com. Time is running out to enjoy the Clarence menu at Chicken Chef. Go all out with the Applewood Smoked Bacon and Cheddar Smash Burger. Find full flavors with the Texas Prime Rib Dip or try something outrageous with the Dill Pickle Poutine. Chicken Chef is also cooking up the savory lemon pepper walleye and the authentic Sri Lankan chicken curry and rice. And that's just a sample of the tastes on the March menu at Chicken Chef. Proud to be bringing you this Bomber Playoff broadcast. Northland Ford proudly supports the Flin Flon Bombers in the SJHL playoffs, and we know they'll play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 45 years and counting. Northland Ford is helping the community cheer on the Bombers as they fight to bring a championship back home where it belongs and will provide you with the best selection to choose from in the North for the North. Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. Be ready as soon as the meltdown happens with Frontline Sport and Leisure. You need the hit to Polaris Sportsman XP 1000. All right. You experience the perfect good power, capability, and comfort. Plus, Frontline can put you in a 2024 Sportsman A50, providing premium performance and passenger seating, giving you both a ride you'll never forget. When spring finally gets sprung, it's time to tackle the trails. Go where you want and need to be. The best way to do it. Frontline Sport and Leisure, Coronation Drive in Creighton, 688-3333. McDonald's, the proud supporter of sports and hockey in the north, and I welcome you to stop by any time of the day for all their tasty menu items. Whether it's breakfast, including the delicious McMuffin sandwiches, the bacon agar, sausage agar, egg McMuffin, and hot cakes. Lunch and supper, they've got you covered with Big Macs, Quarter Pounders, Quarter Pounder BLT, the McChicken, Crispy Chicken, and the McNuggets. And don't forget about the value meal as well. Their menu includes the McDouble and the juice. Ten seconds. Use the McDonald's app and order online to collect points for free items and free meals. That's McDonald's and Flin Flon, the drive through open daily starting at 7 a.m. You're on. All righty, we're back here at the uh, Whitney Forum. Rob Hart, the Big M, Austin Mattis, and a whole whack of post-game show awards to get to. Uh, you know what? Let's leave the three stars to last. I like that. So we got something brand new. It's the shockwave of the game from Full Range Massage Therapy. A big hit. What do you got for us? Shockwave of the game. I think I got to give that one to Anthony Bax on that corner hit right there on uh, Vanden Elsden because when he made that hit, right after that, Vanden Elsden reacted, and that is what gave the Bombers the five on three opportunity. So the big hit. It was a great hit, but what it reacted to was the five on three, and that's why I'm giving it the shockwave of the game. That's a good call. Okay, so that leaves us with the uh, Warrior of the game. That's courtesy of the gang at Frontline. Who have you got? There are probably a lot of guys you can pick. If you want to do more than one, have at her. There was a few, and you know what? I think the first one I'll go with is Riley Niven. Did a great job. He had today. a good game tonight. True Warrior. Had that great chance right off the hop. Great chance right off the hop. Really got in the dirty area. Sometimes a little, a little, got a little too dirty, but you know what? 
He really plays hard. He defends his teammates. And you know what? He will always get up after a play. He's never on the ground. Really a true warrior. And then the other person. I think I'm going to give it to Keith Bruner, another guy who's really... He played good tonight. Yeah, really using the elbow grease, getting in the corners. Uh, maybe could have been a bit better on the draws, but still really played hard, crashed the net, and did all the dirty work that some guys don't like to do. So Niven and Keith Bruner are the Warriors of the game for front line. And, you know, those guys are going to be key because we talked about, you know, the better players being the better players scoring the goals, but you need those sandpaper guys as well. And uh, and Gruner and, and Niven tonight were, were fantastic. Chicken Chef, three stars of the game. Let's do her. We'll go from three, you know how we like it, three, two, one. Yeah, th third star, got to give it to Carter Anderson. One goal, one assist, two points today. Gets that beautiful goal there, the second one of the game on the power play, on the five on three to really kind of open the can of worms here for the Bombers. And then also that assist right down here behind the net up to That's Justin. Beautiful pass. beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. He's third star. Second star, going to give it to Alexi Silvestri. Silvestri, another guy who had a great game today. One goal, one assist, two points. But not only did he have that, he was also making plays in the first two periods, had so many opportunities to score, just couldn't get there, and then finally opening a couple minutes of the third there, gets a nice little breakaway, puts it five holes. Absolutely beautiful. And then the number one star, first star for today, is got to be Harmon Laser Hume. We didn't talk about him too much during the game, but when you do a great job, uh, you're a great goalie, people aren't going to talk about you because you make every save look easy, and that's what Harmon Laser Hume did tonight, made every single save look easy. And we talk about this game in, game out, and it might sound like a broken record. It might sound like a cliche again. Not necessarily how many saves you make, but when you make them. He had to be good early. He made probably his, well, by far the Bombers' uh, toughest period was the first when they were outshot 13-7. He had to be really good early tonight, and that's the big save for him. Oh, and especially those ones with the puck flying wide open when the Bombers turned it over. Had some free shots right up in the high slot area. Still able to see the puck. Comes out of his net a little bit. Makes it, makes it hard to uh, get those through. Great saves. And yet again, on the penalty kill as well when... Uh, Kindersley's trying to put, put those shots on that has no problem coming out of the net a bit to make it a, himself a bit bigger and make those lanes a bit harder to shoot from. And a great job. That's why he deserves the first start today. Harmon Laser Hughes. Great job, Austin. One last break. The uh, victorious coach is with us. Mike Reagan will sum things up when we return. This is uh, SJHL Playoff Hockey here on 102.9 CFAR and OneFlawOnline.com. Hit into the boards. That sends shockwaves through the ring. They'll need to be sent for shockwave therapy at full range therapy in Creighton for sure. Pain reduction, restoration of movement, that's just what's needed here. With stem cell activation accelerating the healing of bone, muscles, and tendons. Better call or go online for an appointment because Shockwave is ideal for everyone who battles everyday and injury pain. Win the pain game against chronic headaches, injuries, arthritis, neck, back pain, and more. Book a Shockwave appointment with Mark at FullRangeTherapy.com. Your transformation awaits. Truck Month is back at Great North GM in the Paw. And they have a huge selection of trucks and SUVs with deals so sweet, it'll make you say, Truck Yeah! Get 0% financing on select 2024 GMC and Chevy trucks, rates depending on terms OAC. Plus, get cash incentives on select 2024 GMC and Chevy trucks, and low lease rates on 24-month leases on select 2024 trucks. So what are you waiting for? Take home a new truck or SUV for a truckin' awesome deal. During Truck Month, the Great North GM in the Paw. It's always a great day at Great North GM. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, to the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting Ten seconds. Family owned and operated with experiences in the north. Visit Bailey Dash Home. Oh, wait, we got uh, one more. Uh -huh. 4903 5220. Transform any space in your home with Jim's Custom Doors and Windows and Shade Omenic Blinds. Windows are the eyes of your home, and blinds aren't just coverings. They're a fashion statement for your windows. And with tons of options, they have a style for every taste. Choose from a kaleidoscope of colors and textures to fit your personality. And the best part? Shade Omenic Blinds are designed to control light and density, giving you the power to create the perfect ambiance in any room. Shade Omenic Blinds at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows. You're on. All righty, thank you very much. Welcome back to Whitney Forum. Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Bombers, has joined us, Mike. And uh, I imagine it feels pretty good to get that first one here tonight. 100%. You know, um, you want to get off to a good start, uh, you know, in the playoffs. And as we've talked multiple times, I mean, and we've beaten it to a pulp here, um, you know, haven't played our best 
best uh, hockey uh, late in the season. So to get that first one and, you know, score four goals and, and get a shutout, I, I think is, is huge. You know, our penalty kill was awesome as we were talking off air there. And, uh, you know, when you can uh, have your penalty kill being so strong and, you know, we just get the two power plays and, you know, obviously a five on three, you got to make them pay. And, and we did. So it was good. Good all round game. I thought Kinsley played a, uh, did a good job in the first period, really limiting your opportunities. But how big Mike was that for Vokter to score three minutes into the opening period? Yeah, I mean, I said I said to Vox there, I said that there's my there's my playoff boy. You know, like he he always elevates his game in in the playoffs, and uh, you know he got us started. And it's it's fitting that uh, a guy that's been here for three years uh, got us going. Big goal there, and of course you get the power play goal by Carter Anderson, the five on three, and then two quick goals in the third period. And Mike, when after Silvestri got that third goal, that really looked like the Bombers of old. The way you guys were attacking, uh, just uh, I, I kind of uh, summed it up like a great white shark with a wounded seal in the water. You know, it really, after that third goal by Silvestri, that looked like the team that we saw. I thought we saw at the showcase in October, November, you know, early January, a team that had a lot of confidence and was attack, attack, attack. Yeah, you know, I think that we built some confidence there, and then. Cut kind of it was nice to get that three goal lead we we talk about you know first to three uh a lot you know uh, statistically wise or percentage wise usually the team that gets to three first uh wins uh, a bulk of the games and you know for us to score there and and just such a hard working goal you know that's typical of alexi he's a dog um you know and and i i think that everybody kind of had a bit of a sigh of relief and and then um you know it was just kind of like okay we're, we're the old team in that confidence. You know, we played with that that swagger that we've been looking for for a while here. Well, the crowd, we talked about it in the pregame, Mike. We knew they were going to be a factor. They were great. Uh, the, the Go Bomber, Go Champ, half big throw tonight. A, a fantastic crowd here. They're loud and uh, must be nice. To, must be fun to play in front of a great group like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, we got six or seven recruits here right now, and uh, they uh, they loved it. You know, we always we talk to them about uh, the atmosphere and what it's like to play at the Whitney Forum. And, and uh, they need to experience it firsthand. You, you send them videos and stuff like that. But uh, uh, for them just to see it uh, in person, I think, is huge for us. And uh, they just loved it. You know, all of them had a big smile on their face. And, uh, you know, that's a big part of getting them to come here. You know, our fans and this community is so important. And um, they love their bomber hockey. And, and, you know, that's what players want. They want to be a part of a community that cares about them, that... Uh, you know, supports them, and uh, you're 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 definitely a, a mini celebrity here. You know, for junior A hockey, and and everybody kind of knows who you are and that sort of thing. But with that comes big responsibilities and standards and expectations. And you know, um, we've tried to build a culture here that uh, everybody can be proud of. And uh, I think that uh, are we perfect every time? No, but uh, you know, for the most part, I think this is a group that that very that cares about their community and, and shows it. Got to ask you, Mike, how's Joey Lee's doing? Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to take a look at it. I, I mean, I, I hate jumping to conclusions, you know, without... I didn't uh, see it. Was it hit him behind the play? Like? I, I, I couldn't see it either because it's, it's along the wall there, and the next thing I know, he's coming to the bench and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, we talked about it before the game. It's why you, you make the moves you make yeah. at, the, at the deadline because, you know, hopefully Joey's okay, and, and I thought he played a great game, but... You know, when a guy goes down, the next guy up has to be able to perform, and and we've got a lot of confidence in the guys in the room, and uh, or every guy in that room, and uh, I'm sure whoever we decide to go in tomorrow night's going to do a good job. No, oh, there's certainly hoping uh, and wishing him a, a quick recovery. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see him afterwards, so I'm not really sure how he's doing, to be honest with you. Well, like I said, I, I wish him a best of a best of getting back in the lineup as soon as he can, but uh, you got another one of those heart and soul guys, Mike, and. Uh, Everybody, you could tell that everybody was kind of dialed in for this one for sure. Yeah. Is this one of those games, not to cut you off, Mike, but is this, you got the playoffs coming in. I know you guys like to do pregame speeches before, but is this one of those nights where you don't really have to say a heck of a lot? It's almost like you you got to calm them down a little bit, you know, because they're so amped up. And, and you know, throughout the week, we're, we're going over a lot of video. We're um, focusing in on what Kindersley does well. And, you know, um, you know they, they did throw a couple wrinkles at us. Uh, um, you know, with our, our, our scouting report and changed up a few things. So we'll look at the tape here and uh, be able to make some adjustments and stuff like that. So, I, I mean, it's nice to get that first one out of the way. I think that uh, guys can, you know, they're calm their, their nerves a little bit. 
I hear you. So here, looking forward to game two tomorrow night, Mike. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, to try to, to carry over where you did tonight. You got your, your guys scoring. You're playing good defensively. Some good goaltending. So kind of all fell into place. And now uh, being a first-place team, I know that uh, you're looking to obviously uh, put back-to-back -back efforts because, let's face it, Kindersley could still win tomorrow night and take away home ice advantage tomorrow night. I mean, as, as great as tonight was, you got to yeah. put it behind you and really focus on game two. No, 100%. You know, I, I mean, Kindersley's whole goal is to come here and get a split you know obviously they want to win two if they can but like i mean they're looking at it as like okay we gave them a, a good game here tonight now let's let's try to to get tomorrow night and we go back to kindersley one one and feel good about ourselves and and that sort of thing so it, it's up to us to just make sure that we have that same intensity and uh and focus here for for tomorrow Sounds good, Mike. Congratulations. Solid uh, game one victory here tonight. Thanks very much, Hardy. Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Bombers. The Bombers picking up the 4 to nothing victory to take a game, uh, one game to none lead in the SJHL quarterfinal. McDonald's out of town scoreboard. Melfort's got Estevan down 3-1 in the third. Likewise, Humboldt in front of Weyburn and Battleford a one nothing lead on Melville after 40 minutes of play. Manitoba Junior Hockey League, all the games are over tonight. Steinbeck beat Nipperville 5-2. Winkler over Portage 4 to 1. Woodburton takes it to Nipawa 6 1. And Dauphin hangs on for a 2 1 victory against the Blizzard here tonight. So it's pretty much going to do it for our broadcast again. Austin, any parting comments before we officially wrap it up here from uh, a ruckus? Well, what was a ruckus Whitney form here uh, earlier tonight? Uh, just yet again, Rob, always nice to be up here. And, you know, big thanks to the fans, everyone tuning in, all that good stuff. We couldn't do it without you. And we're excited to be back here tomorrow. Mike Slip will be in place for me today. So. You'll have him, good old Mike Slip. He'll be, bring you guys a great broadcast, but yet again, Rob, always a pleasure to be up here with you. Calling some great SJHL games in one of the most historic places here at the Whitney Forum. Could, wouldn't spend my Friday anywhere else. Great game for the Bombers, but Clipper's going to come back hard tomorrow. It'll be a tough one for sure, and again, the goal for them is still there. If they could take one of the first two and take away home ice advantage. So, uh, get some good things, but they got to find a way to bury when they get chances. I think one of the big differences in the game tonight. But great job by Austin Mattis, our color commentator. A big thanks to him, Mike Reagan, and Clayton Jardine for their comments before and after the game. Uh, great to catch up with Noel Hull, the SJHL Defenseman of the Year. Our opening intermission uh, guest here tonight, and Kenny Polichuk as well on behalf of the Memorabilia Committee. Uh, great uh, talking about all those nice Hall of Fame Manitoba plaques. Of course, all the Flintstone players and people that were inducted in the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame now have a special place here at the Whitney Forum where people can take a look at those wonderful plaques they won, of course, throughout the years. So great job by him and his committee. And a big thanks to him as well for joining us in the second intermission. The final score, the Flint Farm Bombers 4, the Kennedy Clippers uh, nothing here at the Whitney Forum. Game 2 back here at the one and only Whitney Forum tomorrow night. We should thank uh, Matt Morrison as well. Our guy Manning uh, the Flow TV controls. I did a great job. Uh, added another camera here in the booth. Never stops working, so a big thanks to him uh, for helping us out as well on the Flow TV angle. So I think we got everybody in. Raphael right back at CFR Control as well. A big thanks to him, and a big thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in. And uh, thanks for listening to Flint Farm Bomber Hockey. Hope to see you back here at the Whitney Forum tomorrow night. 1029 CF. And clear. Thank you for being